Look at this. The line out the door tonight to get into the ship chasing club to watch a main event draft. You guys are excited about this. We are incredibly excited. We wrapped with Sean a few weeks ago, got our zero RB targets dialed in, got our main event draft plan, and now we are ready to execute. We have Pat, who just emerged from a hurricane in New York. Apparently, we have Ben Gretsch staying dry on the West Coast. Sean, with a nice new podcast set up from Parts Unknown. How are we feeling tonight, guys? The draft about to start here in a couple minutes. Pat, it's your story again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my story, Pat. What's going on? It's raining insanely hard here in Brooklyn. Like I can't, I can't like, even describe how hard it is. And I live on the ground floor, and the way we have a like a little backyard, and the way that's set up is you like come down a couple stairs, like to get to our back door. If you're in the backyard, you come down a couple stairs, and there's like a little cement pad and then there's a drain in that pad and so the water's pouring in through our door right now and so i went out there to try to clear the. i figured the drain must be clogged so i went out there to see if there's like any leaves there's like one half piece of a leaf but that's not the problem the problem is that like the the, the skies have opened up like i was just getting like drenched like in one second as soon as i went out i was just like soaked to the bone i was like oh, oh. Like, i had to like remember what i was doing like i was just like try to clear the leaves and then and, like there's water all over the floor like we've you, we've gone through all of our towels like it's still basically coming in we just had to like press all these wet towels up against the door to try to like just like slow it down it's supposed to rain for another eight hours here it's crazy Pat, when we named the show Ship Chasing, we didn't envision you'd literally have to chase a ship right now. Uh, <laughs> the water's going to be up to here by like the 12th round. <laughs> right? That's, I think Jalen Rager's a good pick. Yeah, we're going to be <laughs> auto-drafting Jalen Rager and Zach Moss again this year. That's going to be doing not Penny's boat, not Rashad Penny's boat, just like up against the uh, the side there. Uh, Sean, how we feeling here? You got some main event drafts under your belt. You have the zero RB countdown list out. We've all been devouring it. You feeling good about uh, tonight? I am and, and have a lot of experience drafting from the 109. So it'll be interesting to work with you guys to get a little bit of diversification from just all the other 109 teams I already have. Sean, we, we got to start with Najee Harris. The the ship chasers got a hold of uh, a change in your rankings and they have, I, I've been asked like five times. I can't imagine how many times Pat and Pete have been asked, but they, they want to know when Sean Siegel became a Najee Harris truther. <laughs> a robust running back truther. Man, it's been the worst, right? I mean, all of the running back targets are now gone. So talking with, with Pat yesterday, he was clearly finally off of Antonio Gibson. And so <laughs> the, only, <I> mean, <laughs> <laughs> the only answer now is we've got to draft the guy who's going to lead the NFL in touches if he averages three yards per carry. So what? There you go. I mean, it's a good take. <laughs> Everyone else uh, sucks. Let's. Let's uh let's start uh dialing in what we're gonna do here. Kelsey goes off the board four, Henry at five. I always like to see Henry go at five. Uh we are we have our three wide receivers still on the board right now. If those three come off, puts us in a pretty interesting situation. But my guess is someone won't be able to resist Ezekiel mm -hmm. Elliott before we pick. Well, Waller There's... Waller would be there as well at nine. Oh, yeah, Waller right. would be there too. Yeah. Zeke's so, gonna go. I think we're getting a receiver at Waller. Sean, Sean yes. yeah, go ahead. Well, you, you mentioned that you wanted to diversify at the 109 off of what? What have you done so far? <clears throat> it's been Tyreek Hill both times. And the part of the reason is that buy for Devontae Adams. How, how concerned are we about the fantasy semifinals and, and how that plays out? Ben was also asking me about Najee Harris above A.J. Brown. We obviously love A.J. Brown, but he's got a playoff buy issue in this format as well. Well, we have Adams and AJ Brown on the same team, so that should tell uh, you how much we're uh, really <laughs> worried about the the semifinals buy. We're getting that buy, Sean. We're not we're not worried about these semifinals. Although Henry Mudo was in the chat last week and very much disagreed with that take. So, <laughs> yeah, there, here's Henry. Uh, I got yelled at everyone when I brought up the week thirteen. Uh, Zeke Elliott and Tyreek go. Uh, Sean, if we are staring. Okay, Adams goes. I mean, Waller or Diggs is what we're looking at, right, fellas? Yep. Sean, Ben, let's hear your takes. I'm comfortable with either. 
I already took Diggs in a, in a main. It would be Diggs for me normally, but I would be very comfortable starting Wall. Sean, you get to make this decision. Pick it for us. I, I don't have hardly any digs in him, and he's my favorite guy. So I'd be on board with that. It depends a little bit on our tight end strategy in two and three. I mean, if we're off of Kittle or we don't think we can get Hawkinson or don't want more Hawkinson, then we should go Waller. But otherwise, I think Diggs is the guy here. I say we do digs. I, I don't think I'd necessarily want to take Kittle in the early second necessarily. I don't think, yeah. So Sean's saying we have to take Hawkinson, which I'm also comfortable with. <laughs> I'm good with Hawkinson. Let's do let's do digs here. Okay. Let's do digs. All right. Digs is on the queue. So yeah, talk that through a little bit. Sean, is this your is this your first share of digs in the main? It is. It is. And it's fun to have him there. Uh, we have an occasional but very fun uh, piece on ceiling bananas where we have a, a Gretsch me if you can. And Ben says that Diggs is going to be the wide receiver one. And there there are a lot of reasons to think that that's the case. I'd like to get a lot of Hill and a lot of Diggs and then a little bit of Waller from this spot and then come back and, and try and get some of these tight ends. It's a little bit trickier now. I mean, obviously, we already knew the tight end is crucial in this format. We know that it's difficult because unlike wide receiver running back, you can't just go to your second guy in any good round. In any round, there's really just one option. And now that Irv Smith, who you know, had really so much going for him before what happened, now that he's no longer there, we really are fairly limited on ways that we can get the elite tight end and then come back with a second good tight end to have that kind of you know balance and firepower. So the tight end situation is tricky. Yeah, I, I should have known, especially now that we're talking about tight ends, that sending uh, a sub stack about Tyler Croft uh, an hour before the stream was going to lead to this. <laughs> the, the, the chat, chat. <laughs> the chat was Tyler Croft in the first round. <laughs> I must have missed this nickname, Babyface Killer Croft. I hadn't seen that one yet, uh, but it does make a ton of sense. Uh, yeah, I mean, what we did with Crack Rock last week where we didn't get the elite tight ends, I mean, I feel like we attacked it about as best we could. We did Noah Fant, we did Gerald Everett, and we did Cole Komet and uh, did the cranking purple just trying to take three big upside cracks. I feel like that's basically what you need to do if you miss out on one of these top six tight ends. Well, that's what we did with Davis, and then at the end of the show, he said we can no longer win because we don't have the star tight end, and he gave us a B minus <laughs> on our draft. So <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound tight like tight end was a, a huge sticking point when we drafted with Davis. It was funny. We we invited Davis on. We're, we're obviously all good buddies with Davis. I had kind of expected that he had listened to the pod a little. He came on. And he's like, "Yeah, I haven't had a chance to, to hear any of the episodes." And so he just like was on all opposite players, and it was like <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a lot of other people that you know we probably could have had on that have been listening and would have loved to draft with us. But yeah, it, it was interesting. Uh, Sean, question for you: Do you do you have a when you do these drafts like right now? Do you have a cheat sheet up? Do you have your rankings, or are have you just know the boards inside and out that you're able to do this bare knuckle style? I, I usually do them just with the board going and, and have a sense of it, it's that combination. We talked about it a little bit, and uh, Ben and I talked about it a little bit on the show how th this kind of contrast between incorporating ADP into your rankings or not. And I've said that I've gone ahead now and I'm, I'm not really incorporating them at all and hoping that people understand, you know, don't take someone I have ranked three rounds ahead of ADP, you know, more than a couple of spots ahead, but it's kind of combining that element where, you know, there are a couple of receivers that I'm, you know, two, three, four, six rounds ahead of ADP on. And hopefully people are, are waiting until that spot. I'm trying to make myself wait till that spot as well, which can be the, the biggest challenge. Yeah. That, so what are that we, makes all right. Sense. Yeah. What, what are we, we doing here? here? Najee Harris it's is really off the board. Strong. Our top running back target is gone. I, I'll throw a name out. I, I assume he's going to go, but Aaron Jones would be kind of fun. I'd rather go back to Barkley again than Aaron Jones. See, and I think I'm Gibson over Barkley if we're doing this uh, rock, oh, paper, I, scissors of, of running backs I, then here. I'll go back to Gibson. So there's two for Gibson. Uh, Sean Sean, and Ben, who? what guys look interesting I want, to you? I want to know, not even considering running back, Sean, where would you go here? For me, I, it would be probably Kittle, but uh, you guys are not assigning Kittle. We don't have so much Kittle. I, I wouldn't be... Well, I know, I know Sean's not super high in it, but so Sean, who would you, where would you go here? 
But we're on the clock, I mean, so what do you want to do? Yeah. I'd be tempted to go with Justin Jefferson, but I'm afraid that his quarterback is going to miss like half the weeks of the season. It, it, yeah, I mean, either one of those those running backs, and there are a lot of things against Barkley now, but I mean, it's it's Saquon. I mean, he has this chance to, to win the whole thing. Uh, you know, we want A.J. Dillon. We've got a lot of A.J. Dillon. I mean, you could balance that out by taking – Jones and if AJ Dillon gets hurt, I mean, one of the things that we've seen already is ETN has gotten hurt, made James Robinson better. I mean, if that were to happen with the Packers, I mean, Aaron Jones is going to absolutely destroy. Twenty so, seconds. I mean, I think it's fifty fifty here. Is so Jefferson, twenty seconds. I have him right back to back. You guys want to? I I don't mind the Jefferson. We do we want to piss yellow here? No, he's saying Kirk's not vaccinated. He doesn't want to take him. So you want Barkley? <laughs> Say let's it, go. Bar- let's go Barkley. Okay, boom, we got Barkley. I just want to avoid Oof. a timeout. Uh, as yeah, long I would as, too. as long as you we get the stamp of approval on the pick here. Yeah, we cut that one tight, but I think I think Barkley was was a good pick there. I mean, look the the way that I did the um, the original dead zone research, the the cutoffs I used a little bit different than than Pat's uh, legendary stuff, a little bit more broad. But I, I had a. a, a a cutoff for just for playoff production. It was very high. You had to average at least 23 points. One of the things I've been remembering with Saquon was as a rookie, he reached the cutoff for full season points as a second year player. He got hurt, came back was so good down the stretch. He hit the cutoff for uh, the postseason points. He scored at least an average of 23 points per game in, well, at least 69 total points is what it is for weeks 14 to 16 of that year. I mean, he was amazing down the stretch that year. It is just three random weeks, but I do think it's so, somewhat notable that the only two seasons before last year when he didn't play, he's in the, this this list of, I think it's like 90 running back seasons in the last 12 years or something. But he's done great things both of the years he's played football. That's the point. Yeah, and Sean, are you, are you still looking at this where you see him here and you think he should, if we remove the injury concerns – he should be what in your mind? One hundred and three after McCaffrey and Kamara. I would probably move him down into the one hundred and six, one hundred and seven range. But we're now—I mean, that's still a, a pretty big discount. And I've got a lot of confidence in the overall build, and the overall build will work. And so, while I wouldn't necessarily want to take too many Week Thirteen players, I am comfortable taking guys who I think are going to have the bulk of their production in the second half of the season. And I mean. There are some other problems now with the Giants that could hold down his scoring a little bit. But even with that being the case, I mean, he sets up so much better than really everybody except for McCaffrey and Kamara. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think now it's the the Barkley ADP, it's probably the combination of kind of the injury uncertainty, even though we have started to get more clarity that he's going to be good to go. And just people don't like this Giants offense. I think there's there's just a lot of kind of general concern about how good this team is going to be. Yeah. And, and that could really hurt him. At the same time, the fact that a lot of their receivers look like they won't be available, I mean, they may be in a position where it really needs to be pass to Barkley, pass to Barkley, pass to Barkley. I mean, I don't think it's going to be anything like his rookie year, but he should be heavily involved in the passing game. That's a good point on the injuries because they kept John Ross now to IR and they kept CJ Board on the initial 53. Um, and then who did they, they claimed uh, Colin Johnson. So they're, they're like way deeper at wide receiver than you'd think. And that's not a great sign for Galladay's health. It's not a great sign for Tony's health or how far along he is. He, he I mean, he bombed the the summer more than any rookie. Um, so it's you know it's all pretty concerning for like how much they're going to get out of these wide receivers. So although the wide receivers look crowded on paper, like ultimately they they might be pretty thin there. Yeah. Uh, we always like to keep tabs on the 101 teams. Uh, I famously. Wow. I mean, love it. A- AJ Brown getting really disrespected at this turn with Keenan yeah. and Lamb. I mean, come on. Can you imagine uh, how nice it is to have the 101 where we start Christian McCaffrey, CD Lamb, and AJ Brown? That seems like wow. it would be fun. We have no 101s this year. It's like, <laughs> let's just do another. Let's just, let's just keep running these until we get a 101. <laughs> Yeah, I can't, I, I can't trust a guy whose head is just completely soaked in uh, hurricane rain right now. What, what about me? Uh, it doesn't seem trustworthy. I'm soaking wet. Honestly. I mean, Sean's going to keep running him until he gets anything other than the 109. <laughs> 
Hey, God, I need to know, Sean, is this you putting guys in the queue? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all yeah. right, I like it. Put a couple people, and they're trying to keep track of, of who's there. I think before the night is over, I mean, Pat is going to have to do some kind of rescue. I mean, it's going to be a better story than the guy who was killing all the snakes during the draft. And so, <laughs> I, I mean, there's, there's got to be a part two to this adventure. Yeah. Well, the rescue mission would have to come from one of you. Because <laughs> I'm going to be the one underwater. So I don't know who's closest. I guess Pete, Pete, you might want to want to start up the car. Uh, I do need to do the usual thing here on ship chasing streams. Uh, we don't salivate over other teams uh, starts. We only keep our eyes on team nine. Team three wins. No team three wins. Woo team three. No, 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 no. We talk about team nine and how beautiful and perfect it is. That's what we do, guys. Yeah, team nine looks great. We, so I mean, we, we have the, the wide receiver one and the running back one this year, so I think we're we're pretty well set up. <laughs> All right, Hawkinson comes off the board. I wanted him. Hawkinson would have been nice. Sean had Hawkinson in the queue here. Top pick by ADP in the default rankings. Patrick Mahomes, do it, mongooses. Do it. The problem is there's such a tear break here that. Yeah. I mean, Hawk would have made a lot of sense. We could have got a good play coming back. Okay. Woods is not. A, he's, he's, hey, he's another crack, tier. Crack. Don't, 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 uh, don't upset Crack Crack. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear about that? Sean Crack Crack made us take Robert Woods. We're, we, tell the story after we're not on the clock. Okay. <laughs> we need to figure out who we're taking. Oh, you're right. We're on the clock. Sean, let's hear, let's hear what you're thinking. Well, since Hawkinson isn't there, I mean, it's it's massive reach time, right? So, I mean, DJ Moore, T. Higgins. I mean, we could set up to go T. Higgins and Jerry Judy coming back around, do the, the massive reach both times, set us up for a unique situation there. Also, in terms of looking at the three, four together, I have to mention Swift with the injury as someone who's still vaguely interesting. So Sean has DeAndre Swift number one in the queue. Does anyone want to go down to a wide receiver over Swift here? I'd prefer okay. more given that we have Barkley, but I'm let's I'm, let's go more. Let's go more. Okay. All right. I'm always game to draft DJ. Because Sean, I think there's a decent chance that Swift comes back in the fourth, and then we can have our choice between and, Swift and, and Higgins. And Higgins too. That's why I laughed when you yeah. said massive reach for Higgins just to set up the massive reach for Judy. Are you saying you'd rather have Higgins Judy than more Higgins? Probably probably a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that's what you were saying, and I just started cracking up. It's like, oh man. I love this this this, this element of Sean where he's I, it's like half hot take, uh, uh, you know, a spritz of trolling, a little bit of winking. I, I don't have a read on you anymore, Sean. Yeah, I know. It's I I like it a lot, but I it's harder to read. I'm I'm terrified uh, every time we're on the clock. <laughs> you hate DJ Moore now. Well, because we're also our clock DJ etiquette Moore. is. Our, yeah. Well, are you? Sean, are you not more bullish on DJ Moore? There was like kind of a, um, I feel like there was a little bit of a preseason, like, oh, baby, it's going to happen for DJ Moore. Uh, oh, yeah. Are you, are no, you not mean, feeling that? I mean, he's, it, it's not the same because it's not the same price and it's going to be a big just downgrade in quarterback or not downgrade, but just compared to what we had with Diggs, where it's like, oh, he's now in Buffalo. They're going to let him do everything. But I think now in Carolina with DJ Moore, they're going to let him do everything, right? I mean, he's somebody who, you know, if we're talking about next year, who's going to be with those main three guys. I mean, it's, it's DJ Moore. And so, you know, we definitely want to have him there. You'd ideally get a little bit better value. And I do think that coming back around, I was looking at, I've got the ADP pulled up from the last three days of these drafts. I thought, and Swift is kind of going in between us there right at the turn. I thought that he would be lower with just how, you know, concerning kind of the, the situation is there. And, you know, when we're talking about a, a top four round pick, you'd be really afraid to make a selection of someone who really is just in, in trouble for the whole season right off the bat and to pick a position where we know that even if he actually is not in trouble now, he could be in trouble, you know, after week three. So yeah. I'm, I'm good not getting him. I also just think that if you had Swift and Barkley, I mean, you could have two of the top five guys. You could take wide receivers the rest of the way. You know, you're all set up now to have so many shots at that guy who, you know, scores 100 points during that postseason run. So it's still intriguing to me, even though, I mean, it's it's a 
huge danger pick. Uh, everyone in the chat, we did technically time out on that pick, but I switched the queue at the last second. Do not worry. We're not going to time out uh, in this draft. I think there's well, a very- we already have. <laughs> no, I, 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 I time out. I mean, make a selection that we don't want to make well, is what I. It mean. was pretty close. I was also hitting the up button and it wasn't taking, and Pat, I was like, oh. <laughs> "I think Pat, I think you need to just log out of the applet. Let Sean nope. and I handle this." Uh, <laughs> I opened I'm it too around. when you said the queue was happening, so I could follow along. <laughs> I, I have it pulled up. All right, we'll have four people adjusting things all at once. <laughs> yeah, we can't let just Sean have the nuclear coats. That that no. is yeah. that's, that is that's very clear. That's very clear. <laughs> so, oh, I don't... Sean, would you say that the Higgins Judy enthusiasm? Just trying to read your mind. I know you want exposure to every year two receiver you can. Is it is that a, a major point in that? Is that DJ Moore? We're looking at year four for DJ Moore. The year four breakouts are less likely historically. You're looking at this from a big picture standpoint. Is that sort of a fair reason to say that? More of a macro analysis than a micro analysis? Well, I, I mean, I don't think that he needs to break out in the same way. He just needs to have them not use him incorrectly. And they, right. he just needs to have them make the decisions that Buffalo made last year with Diggs and for Sam Darnold not to be a disaster. We, we have a situation in Denver where Judy's quarterback could be a disaster. And, I mean, K.J. Hamler is the superstar there, right? So, you know, why are you buying someone in, in round four or five when <laughs> Hamler's available at the end? But you want a Judy. You're <laughs> on the hot take against your hot take. <laughs> this, is a, this is incredible. We're, uh, we're 10 seconds away from being on the clock. So uh, let's right, figure out what we're doing. And, Cooper. So it's Swift or Higgins, Sean? At this point, I think we take Swift because there's a chance Higgins comes back. It, I, I've seen Higgins recently come all the way back to the end of the fifth. So that would be – my vote would be Swift. What's his recent ADP, Sean? Uh, he's going at the 501 over the last 72 yeah. hours. Uh, but he could okay. come back. And Judy could come back. I mean, he's at the 507. The problem is just that, man, I mean, those those teams in the middle, they get great value there. I mean, ideally, we, we'd have Judy in the middle of the five. But I've kind of made my peace with having the 109 in every draft, which means <laughs> at some point I'm going to have to use the fourth pick here in order to get a share. So – but no, I, I think that Swift is is a fun way to play it too. Hang on, no, we you want, prefer Higgins. We want we want that Sean. We want you to have the guy that you would take here. Imagine all of us are gone. Now my fire alarm's going off. Yeah, how are you uh, playing this if none of us are in the room, Sean? Sean, say a name. Uh, if you, if anybody else is okay with Five Swift, seconds. let's take Swift. All right, Swift. All right, I took Swift. <laughs> That's how you would play <laughs> it. Really? You would you wouldn't have taken Higgins there. Well, I, I was I was swayed by this idea that he might come back, which I think that I was in a draft the other day where I told the guys there was no chance the player we wanted in round seven would come back. He did. And so I'm an optimist. I have now graduated even to another level of optimism. Either Higgs or Judy is going to come back to us. Right. Uh, yeah, the chat is absolutely uh losing their mind. You guys have all it's the classic bait and switch. It was like when we we hyped up wide receivers. We did the big dog. God, God uh, is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, they, they don't know who you are anymore. Oh, uh, I thought we were going Higgins there. I love Swift. Uh, I'm excited about the pick too, but oof, I thought we were going Higgins there. I got to readjust too. I'm with the chat. I, I'm a little in shambles here. I've done a bunch of this build in underdog recently because Swift in the fourth feels like it could be one of the cheat codes for this entire season. Yeah. Like he he has the profile. Like if we were going to redraft the NFL draft right now, like you're taking Taylor and then isn't it Swift? Yeah. So like then why is he going in the fourth round? Like right off that, he just shouldn't be going in the fourth round. Because there's a lot of content creators out there saying how important it is to draft wide receivers early in your draft. No, no, no. I mean, <laughs> he, should, he should be going with all of these other running backs. I mean, there's not really that much difference between him and CEH, him and Mixon. Like, I know the in, the groin issue, but like to be able to get him in the fourth with his profile, he's got that perfect profile, the high value touch profile. I don't know. I think it's it's tough to pass on for me in the fourth. When Ben and I did our 2022 projection, I had Barkley at the 103, Swift at the 105. Now, that's before knowing that Swift may be jacked up. But, I mean, when you're looking at what is going to happen next season, 
and you have those guys in rounds two and four, then, I mean, this is the one situation where it makes some sense. And especially when you're drafting from the 109, you need to take some risks, right, to balance out this huge advantage that the teams at the top four picks have. I mean, if you're ever going to take advantage of the supposed depth of wide receiver, it would be in a situation like this where we've been given two guys who should be going middle of the first and like one, two turn in rounds two and four. Yeah. This I mean, pick here at three, someone just said who they should take. And that, oh, we're not talking about other teams. Sorry. Continue the conversation. Yeah. No lusting over other teams here. Uh, <laughs> See, team three couldn't resist the uh, the round four yes. running back siren song. Strong here. pick. Yes. <laughs> the crowd goes wild. Oh, oh, you guys the, were all salivating over team four, and then they took Mahomes in the fourth round. So every, everyone just relax, okay? The fourth round. Yeah, there isn't really a team, including ours. I guess the team that people would salivate over might be team eight or team one. There's no, like, team, true. Team four they're liking. They, There's they no Mahomes uh, to stack with Kelsey. They have Jefferson and McLaurin otherwise. This is a room devoid of piss boys. It's a real shame. It, it is. Uh, Sean, are you are you a puke boy or a piss boy? Because but we, I think people are confused right now. I, I, I'm, I'm confused as well. No. I, I, <laughs> I thought you were going to lean into it for a second. <laughs> confused as well. Sean, just tell, <laughs> just tell the people because they're very confused when you take DeAndre Swift and Saquon Barkley. I think it would go a long way if you just told everyone you were a piss boy. It would instill a lot of faith in so, everyone. So, Sean, the background is last year on Ship Chasing, taking all the all the purple guys on the FFPC boards, all the tight ends, was cranking purple with, with Crack Rock. Now we're taking the yellow guys or the green guys or, or piss boys or puke boys. It's very – it's high it's highbrow stuff here. You, I mean, you have to – there's a certain level of sophistication that is required to understand. I hope you can get up to this level, but, you know. Well, Pete did have a number of urine-based jokes for us in the last <laughs> episode around. So, I just yeah. want I just want you to own it, Sean. Uh, it would be a lot to me and maybe even some charities <laughs> if you said that you were a piss boy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've got to we've got to earn it first, right? I mean, we've got to have to take some right. wide receivers. <laughs> right. That's true. Back yeah, here. Pete, if you wanted this, man, you should have been you should have been pounding the table for Justin Jefferson. <laughs> you should have been pounding the table for T Higgins. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, see a, I see a uh, lot of yellow in our future, boys. I see a sorry, lot. Sorry, guys. Uh, sorry, T just went. Ah, well, we also T got won. a comment from Pick Four is in the chat, Jet, and he said zero percent chance Higgins making it past to me. So. We're not allowed to speak about our picks in, until after pick four. Yeah, no. it's all right. Jet Jet already made his misstep with Mahomes, so uh, we'll, yeah. we'll let him we'll, we'll let him continue to slip up there. <laughs> Congrats on second place, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, team one, though, so far not messing it up. They uh, no, they're doing are, great. Yeah, they're doing great. That's a great start. I Although really, really, AJ really, Brown. really hate having a, a competent team one. It's the worst, especially Everyone, when we don't have any one on ones. Everyone stop looking at team one. Team one is a layup. Every everyone who gets team one, it's a layup. They don't say you like their team. That's like, you know, they they you know are acting like they hit a home run uh when they woke up this, on third base. This I mean, dude took Keenan Allen over AJ Brown. Stop talking like you like it. He woke up on third yeah, base and somehow stole second and then and then he <laughs> yeah, he scored. He, yeah. And then he <laughs> acted like he hit a double. Right. Uh Mike Davis. What do you know? Now this that's the team. Oh man, it is a it is an unusual start for us. But God, even the stuff that people are saying in the chat about like Swift's bad offense and everything, he's got a good offensive line. So it's like they might actually the one thing they might be able to do is run the ball and then dump off to Swift, um, and they have no wide receivers. God he's damn it. man, Jet is is just trolling us. You knew that was happening. I was a hundred percent sure after Higgins went that then it was going to be Judy. I don't know if he's. If he's trolling us, what? <laughs> I'm taking it to the private chat since but we have a. Now he's asking. He's, he, right as he made the pick, he asked me a question by name. I don't know. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not from Minnesota. Sorry. <laughs> have family out there. 
I, I love that you guys are salivating over this team that took Patrick Mahomes in the fourth. Uh, you guys are the ones that have lost their rockers. One of the deepest quarterback rooms we've ever seen in drafts. Oh, now we're getting soul takes. I'm sure uh, rather than the private chat, Sean's just using the, the... Oh, yeah. Okay. He's got some guys in there that I'm... Our queue is now 19 picks deep. We, we have to like someone that we like here. He's got... Um... A lot of good options in there, in my opinion. Team two is at the gym right now. He just finished a set of split squats. Took Mike Davis. Going to do a protein shake. Oh, my God. That team is high T as fuck. <laughs> oh, man. Cannot pass Cal Pitts at 302. <laughs> Cannot pass unstacked Josh Allen at, at 411. Didn't even, you know, obviously didn't have digs. All right, so. Cobb, let's see what Cobb Nate Claypool goes here to team five. That's a that's a nice build right there. I would never lust after another team, but I don't mind the build. Ayuk goes. That would have been a fun mm. slide. That would have been fun. That would have been very fun. Sean, talk about uh what you're seeing here on the board. Well, I mean, we're getting uh, the lesson very clearly. Not that we need the lesson, but it's just this is exactly – anytime you take a running back, you know, you're going to get cleared out. You're not going to come back and have what you want at wide receiver. The idea that it's deep, I mean, not if you have the 109 because you have that tier break in round three, that tier break in round five. Do we want to – and not to name any names, but do we want to reach by multiple rounds for someone? <laughs> <laughs> Let's – let, let's get your take on Jamar Chase because I, I'm just guessing the three of us, that would probably be our, our pick. What's, what's your take on Chase? I know you're big on Higgins. I know you're big on Boyd. Is this the right price for Chase? I think so. I mean, he's got things turned back around there. That offense is going to score a ton of points. They have uh, some shootout setups in the postseason. And this would be the time to get the exposure, right? Where we get wiped out of the tier that we really want. Yeah. And, and, and we decided not to take Higgins. So might, might as well take the guy that's going to supplant Higgins right away. Yeah, and I mean, Chase had been going, what, late fourth for most of the offseason. Then he has one bad practice. He drops a couple balls in a preseason game, and now you're getting uh, almost a, a round discount on him. Yeah, I like it. I like Chase here a lot. I would rather have gotten some of the second-year guys, but I don't know. <laughs> The, this comment said, "Watch out! These guys are dribbling yellow." <laughs> the stream's starting, baby. <laughs> it is sort of like, um, you know, we're getting a little older. We started, stopped, started, <laughs> stopped, <laughs> started again. <laughs> are you saying our team we puked needs to in between each one? We had to stop. I'm saying our team has an enlarged prostate. That's what I, I'm saying. This is a morning <laughs> after uh, a morning after no, no. a night in Vegas type piss. Uh, we, talk, <laughs> we talk about there's a fantasy counselor, there's fantasy gurus. We need a fantasy urologist for this team. <laughs> we need a fantasy urologist. <laughs> well, that's oh, why you're in green. Uh, this is not what Sean signed up for when, uh, to draft a team with us. This is officially off the rails. Now, all we have to do to redeem it is to reach by multiple rounds with our, our six what is your team. What is your fascination what, what is with the reaching, reaching? Sean? I, it's a specific player. I mean, look at the queue. I know, but that seems so... Okay. I'm completely <laughs> out on that player. That's what's kind of funny. I, no, 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 no. I would... The yellow Which player. player. Oh, the yellow player. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. We, we all like the yellow player. That's who he wants to reach several rounds on. Oh, oh. You... Then you have no argument there. That's what no, we're yeah, yeah, no exactly. There, now you're like, what's the fascination with reaching? That's the fascination with reaching. Oh, no, no. I thought we were talking about the purple player. Well, he, he's at the top of the queue, so that's why I, just I was. I switched it. Okay. I'm right, probably Sean? wrong, and, and uh, the purple player is going to be a smash, but I just. Do I have that accurate, Sean? Yes. No, I mean, it's. I, you know, I don't want to give any spoilers, but. Yeah. I, I've it, already. 
Is it too early to do the highlights? I mean, we play the hits here, no, Sean. We, we play, play the, the hits. hits. We, we play, play the hits. hits. The people want. Now, Sean, that. did you did you see our stream with uh, with Paul? And are you trying to go for a triple highlight show? Is that is that your goal here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I know Sean likes us. I don't think he likes us enough to watch every single one of our drafts. <laughs> <laughs> I was we frustrated did, uh, by the fact that in the last preseason game, they decided to not play any defense down there by the goal line to make it impossible for this guy to get back to us in round seven. It is true. Uh, it's true. Yeah. It was, yeah, although the highlight reel of him dragging the defenders, that was already going to boost his ADP by about five to six spots. And then the, the TD was going to boost it by another five or six. So I, I got to say, I'm very excited for the chat mostly that we're trending towards Tyler Croft as our starting tight end. It's going to be great. It's, oh, it's I'm all excited. Work out. <laughs> I literally sent before we started talking about this in discord, Ben, I'd already sent Pete like a clip from the athletic. I screenshot of, like it's Croft season. <laughs> I was like, we gotta get we gotta get some crafts man <laughs> uh there he goes this is what happens when you talk about lavisca show oh uh, my god yeah. if you were worried about that there you go the idiots took him i'm not making any commentary about them that's literally their team name this is what happens this is what happens when you assume your guy is going to make it back don't worry we can still get baby face killer croft later that feels a lot less fun now. The uh, disc is not on the team. I'm hurting inside. That this there is Matt. Uh, I love you. You seem like a good guy. There is absolutely zero chance Chase falls to the to the sixth round here. Um. All right. Let's regroup. We need to huddle. Um. I don't see any yellow in our queue. Uh. Miles Gaskin goes off the board here. Sean, talk this out. I don't have any good yellow here either. What about yeah, Sutton? So, I mean, there's there's so much depth, right? But is there any idea of I mean, this would be the time that you would take one of the quarterbacks and have that just massive upside, mm -hmm. not necessarily use the multiple picks on, say, I don't know. Kyler's here. We don't have Kyler, and it's the sixth round. Kyler. Or do, you is... want, do you want Lamar? Yeah, sure, I mean, want Lamar. Lamar is here. Uh, Antonio Brown goes. I don't know. I, I'm I'm Team Kyler, uh, but I'm I'm open to to hear what we're thinking. Sean, make the quick Lamar QB one take. Well, I, I just think that his profile is so perfect. I mean, it was even when he was playing absolutely awful football last year, he still is scoring. He bounced back. He's scoring big at the end. I think that he's got the highest ceiling. I also think that Kyler is the most fun. And now that we don't have LaVisca. I mean, there is a move that we kind of need with, you know, Pete's bold prediction and all of that hmm. and put some of those guys together. Yeah. I mean, Murray is somebody you could have all the rushing value. You look at that 15, 16, 17, and say four touchdown passes. If a quarterback is going to win you the whole tournament, I think it's going to be Kyler Murray at 15, 16, 17. Okay. The schedule's so nice for the Cardinals. I think slightly better backdoor stack options. What do we think? Let's do it. I have, I've had him ranked higher until either time. guy seems great. All right, Blew my let's get a Kyler share. Lamar take the other day that I was like, oh, yeah, Lamar is good. That I was mean, a great the, call, Sean, of going to to quarterback there. I, I think the the other thing with Lamar that you you mentioned to me, Sean, was the J.K. Dobbins injury. You know, certainly low key is is a positive for Lamar. I mean, I, I think in a lot of ways they're going to have to use him more on the edge as a runner, frankly. Um, both of their main backs now are up the middle backs, but also obviously it, it could lead them a little bit more towards the pass. So Can he's got to be their whole offense. David's comment here. I this one? No, no, David's <laughs> the one above it. <laughs> no, not that guy. <laughs> That's good. This home is a good league burn. standard scoring. That's how we're playing it. This team has big home league yeah. standard scoring the, energy. The reason this analogy does not hold up is because in the home league, you saw Jamar Chase drop two passes in the preseason, and you just completely crossed him off your board. <laughs> <laughs> also, DeAndre Swift, the the home league guys, they don't they don't like the groin injury. He's off the board. DJ Moore in the third, no way. This isn't a home league dude. All right, Sean, how are we feeling? Good. I think that 
that Murray fixes that problem and sets us up for some fun guys a little bit later on. It tight end, you know, big picture, not necessarily the exact plays that we want. We had some discussion in the side chat here of how to go about it. Do do we have some general feelings about how we can get that tight end upside? Yeah. Tyler Croft. I think there is a, a tier here uh, that if these guys fall, I think they're they're very solid selections. This is also a range, though, where you can see a bunch of FFPC drafters reach for these tight ends. So I think it's an interesting spot. Um, I think it's a hinge point here in the sixth, seventh round where if we get a tight end, we can probably still take two tight ends and feel good. If we miss out on this range, we're probably more in a cranking purple situation where we're going to want you know, three tight ends. And I think we have the luxury to go with a three tight end build because we have two early running backs and we're not going to need as many of the late round zero RB darts. Yep. Yeah. It's gonna be a little bit of a different build, um, but we are at least if we do crack purple, we're set up for it structurally. Ben, how are you feeling about this squad? It's not what I was anticipating, man. It was it is not <laughs> uh what I what I was anticipating, but I do like it. I do like it. I think it's interesting. Um, you know, we, we we're we're kind of doing a similar thing in the listener in the league. A lot of a lot of the guys uh in that draft are probably here, where we went away from wide receiver depth a little bit just because sort of I mean, there is a point where you have to be willing, I and mean, we have structure for a reason, but you have to be willing to be like, what is the pick that can help me win this league? Or what is the pick that will add the most points to my roster in the most scenarios and all of those types of things? And I think we made those picks. I think Barkley is a very justifiable pick at two. I think Swift is a very justifiable pick at four. I, I think Pat put it perfectly. He has the profile. We're talking about a guy, and Sean saying that he's, he has him fifth overall for next year. Um, and, and then Kyler, same thing. Like he could, like, these are guys that could be massive keys. And, and, and so rather than sticking to structure and taking, you know, a boring dude, like a Mike Evans or a Julio instead of Swift, I mean, we were obviously looking at Higgins, but we made picks that could potentially define our season. It's, you know, it's not the way we drew it up, but I, I like the players. And so now we have to build around that. The funny yeah. thing is, is when you look at the team in, you know, snapshot ADP, I mean, Moore was the only reach against, I don't know, a three week rolling average of ADP. I mean, every other guy uh, was a discount relative where they to where they've been going most of the season. Yeah, we're just ADP grinders now and I love it. <laughs> can we can we talk about Logan Thomas now that he's gone? I know he would have been a conversation for sure. Um, but I, I feel like there's probably no player that I'm more different than I think both Ben and Sean on than Logan Thomas. Because I know you guys are very high. And to me, he's like a very clear avoid. So I guess I, I would just want to kind of hear why you guys like him so much. I actually want to let, – hey, real quick, let's put that back on you, Pat, because I think the bull case for Logan Thomas is actually easier than the fade case. What's the fade case? The fade case is that he was really bad last year and just got there on volume. And that – the guys who we've seen repeat at tight end and the guys just in general who uh, are tight end stars are like hyper efficient, like way more than even the wide receivers are like George Kittle had a 2.84 yards per hour on last year. Travis Kelsey was a 2.5. Darren Waller was a 2.28, which is actually below where he was in 2019 when, you know, we were still a little bit hesitant about Waller. Like, is he really this guy? But he was, he was hyper efficient. He was crushing. He's generating targets at a really high rate, 24% targets per route run. Mark Andrews, uh, even last year in a down year, still had a yards per route run of two. And he had a targets per route run that was damn near 30% uh, the year before. So the, the ability to draw targets at a tight end is a, is a rare, rare thing. But what also happens at tight end is when everything else craps out, the guy can get a lot of volume. And that's my concern with Logan Thomas is that everything crapped out there. You didn't have any wide receivers other than Terry McLaurin. Uh, Terry McLaurin kind of struggled through that season. He had a yards per out run of 1.1 last year. Uh, he really didn't 
show us anything other than a lot of targets, but he ran every single route, which is good. You would like the guys to run as many routes as possible, but there's no room for improvement there. He's already capped out. He's like maxed out. He's running like 95% of routes off the top of my head. It was, he was leading all tight ends, I believe. So there's no room to go up from there. And the offense is probably going to shrink in its total pass attempts because of Alex Smith, because they were trailing a lot. The defense is better. I think they're going to be in better game scripts. And that's bad for Thomas if he is really just going to rely on empty volume. So I'm, I'm basically like fully fading Logan Thomas. Sean, I know you're high on Logan Thomas. Ben, too. What's, what's the counter here with the acknowledgement we're going to be on the clock in a few seconds? Sean, do you want to do it? I can make a quick statistical counter. Yeah, go ahead. I I, I just think from a stat perspective, one, last year was his first year as a, a tight end. His first five games, he was awful. I just pulled up his game log. It's a, it's a very arbitrary cutoff. From week six on, he was more than a yard per target. I don't have, obviously, the yards per run split. More than a Thanks full yard per target better than a season line. So the first five games crushed his efficiency. Also, the quarterback play is going to be better, and he looks to be in the exact same role. So I think the efficiency was so bad that it almost has to get better. And he's probably still going to get a ton of targets. Only six total targets went to other tight ends in Washington. Other than Logan Thomas, he had 110. He ran every route for their tight ends. He's probably going to again. He was 1.32 for week six on in yards per hour. Still terrible. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was below right. Jack Doyle. All right. We are on the clock here. This is a pretty gross range i i don't have anyone even as an adp bro i have no one uh screaming at me let me hear some takes guys the debo went it, sean oh, oh he's gone juju's gone shit it's, it's um, gross anyone have a take? i would say gallup i like gallup here i think he's a good wide receiver and a good offense sean yeah that would be fine i was gonna suggest that we could i mean jalen waddle is screaming up boards and is a little bit of a guy it'd be fun to have some exposure to we already have the rookie in chase and so maybe not the best time to do it uh gallup is a good play uh i will say sean i i think there's probably maybe an 80 percent chance or more we could get waddle coming back unless someone wants to uh twist our words mm -hmm. against us i think we could probably play the adp game and get both of them waddle's adp is slightly higher than gallup so i'd be okay going waddle and trying to get gallup too okay yeah, if we want to, why don't we play it that way? I I want to hear. We're let's draft Waddle and let's hear Sean wax poetic about Waddle. Well, he's not one of the rookie receivers that I really have any exposure to, but with the way that offense is developing, and just to have a little bit of a hedge on Will Fuller, who is, is maybe the best value in all the drafts. I think that if you he comes back here, I don't think it's there's any problem with having both of those guys. Yeah. Right. And so uh, one way or another, you're going to definitely win. You might win on both. I think that both of those guys are are, are discounted. <laughs> Certainly Fuller is discounted. But, you know, if Waddle ended up being the winner, then I mean, you'd have two guys in your lineup here that you could go with. And in a draft where we just I think it's an easier case to make that Waddle comes out of the gate, gets huge volume does have some efficiency with Tua and suddenly becomes the guy in Miami and has a big target share, which we don't necessarily expect for rookies in that first month. I think that he's got a better opportunity to emerge than Gallup does because those first two guys are just so good there in Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I also think both uh, Waddle and Fuller, uh, can coexist there. I I've gotten very excited about Waddle just on the prospect of, and, and, and maybe it's doesn't mean a ton, but just the fact that Fuller isn't playing week one and you got to assume Waddle is going to see the field a ton, just right out of the gate. Uh, I, I like that kind of positive momentum he could have right out of the start. I don't know. Yeah, I and let's say play freaking like Albert Wilson or something. I mean, I don't know. I I'm kind of down on Waddle. I'm totally fine with it, but this, this will be my exposure Ooh. of him. I mean, even if they're playing Albert Wilson in the slot, I mean, you're going to have Parker and then like week one, like who, who else is, who's yeah. displacing him from three wide receiver sets? Uh, obviously Matt Collins. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think Waddle's going to play, but um, I, I actually, no, I'm glad. I, I was glad when you guys said we're going to take him because it's like, all right, I'm going to get some exposure. It's one of those things where like you were just talking before with, with crack rock, like we, we get some exposure to guys that we don't necessarily take, but. I mean, Sean said it too. He said it's not a rookie that he's necessarily on. It's just sort of how I would characterize it as well. I'm, I'm well, glad let, to have him. 
let's talk. I feel like we might have the the Gallup Fuller discussion here. So why don't we why don't we have that as far as how we feel about that with this specific construction? Fuller's the better real life wide receiver. The only reason I tend to take Gallup first is because I can get Fuller later more reliably. Um, but I don't have any problem taking Fuller. I have him back to back as the last of the tier yeah. here. If if we think it's close. I would just say take Gallup because there are rooms where Fuller comes back. Maybe, maybe not in this one, but it's a much greater chance that Fuller comes back compared to Gallup because Fuller has been falling in drafts. For some reason, people do not like Fuller. Same as last year. Yeah, his ADP suggests that he would come back. If we've got some people listening in, then um, that knocks that down some. The other player that I would mention here because we don't have Chenault, and I think that he's getting massively discounted because of the finger injury would be DJ Chark. So unless we want to really get going with Marvin Jones, then, you know, that's a, a potential play. Sean, I'm happy to hear you say that. I've been, I've been pounding the table for shark for like two weeks and no one will listen to me. (laughs) Well, which is good because I just keep drafting him on my underdog portfolio. Um, What about switching to, to Robert Tunyon here? Any any interest in that? I, I'm not even pushing hard for it. I'm just throwing out not the idea. Not from me. That... I, I think Fuller and Shark are both pretty sweet yeah. options. I, I would prefer um, to go receiver too, but I'm I'm on board with the Shark call here now that uh, Gallup's off the board. I would do it as well. Sean, what do you think about uh, Shark uh, or Gretch's suggestion of pivoting over to tight end? Well, there are some tight ends. I mean, we're not going to be strong at tight end there are some tight ends that i think are somewhat similar probably have more volume upside a little bit later that i also don't have exposure to it in terms of the the minor little bit that that matters and so i probably would prefer you know yeah let's take a poor job through four rounds on wide receiver we yeah. got to catch back up yeah we got to take sure let's do we did, do a, we did a poor job that's i that's agree I, I don't even want to i don't even want to take uh, Kenyon, I was just throwing it out there. I mean, I do think there was all this concern about Chark's injury. Uh, a bunch of us were drafting a decent amount of Colin Johnson late in drafts. They release him. Uh, <laughs> well, okay, hang on, I got, I got, I got to jump in real quick because I go, I go to a, 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 a chat with with uh, Ben and Pete. I go, oh god, I had eleven percent Colin Johnson, and Pete goes, yeah. I had a lot too, but it's okay because I mixed in Philip Dorsett. <laughs> <laughs> I I actually there was a translator in my Twitter DMs, and I meant to say uh, Tavon Austin is who I, I, I literally after that comment went and looked up their depth chart, and I was like, wait, Phil Dorsett's on Jacksonville? I didn't he even was. realize he, he was. was on no, he team. isn't now. He's not <laughs> anymore. I, I, that's why I said past tense. Uh, apparently, we were all wrong. Um, there was no what, right answers. The right answer it was, was Tyron, Tyron Johnson. Johnson. It was Tyron Johnson who might actually be decent now. Did they yeah. sign Tyron Johnson? Yeah, they claimed yeah, Tyron Johnson. They, 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 they had the used one, their number, number one, one waiver claim. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kind of like Tyron Johnson again. Maybe I'm back in. Who, I mean, I don't know what Colin Johnson did wrong during the preseason, but uh, anyways, the point is I, I think Chark is a much, much stronger pick uh, in light of his injury not being a big deal and the team feeling like, I, I, I'm willing to bet against Marvin Jones. I, I want to bet against. Oh Marvin yeah, Jones. yes. Yeah. Any chance we can, we can bet against Marvin Jones. And Sean's the OG Marvin Jones hater. I mean, Sean, you you, you, such you a- hated him when he was like, what in college? When like when did you start? Hating? Like I remember when I first met you. Maybe the first thing that you ever said was that that Marvin Jones is terrible at football. And I was like, what? Everyone thinks he's really good. And then you brought me around. It's like Mark Ingram. You can just be wrong every year and keep telling yourself <laughs> one of these seasons, Marvin Jones is going to be bad. <laughs> Are you worried about Mark Ingram in, in Houston? He's going to well, be I mean, you out a guy you can finally stop being wrong on him, and then somehow Houston wants to make him a he starter. He wins the back. job. <laughs> the the Marvin Jones stuff is so funny because Marvin Jones does the exact same thing every year. He has two big games and does nothing else the rest of the season. <laughs> And we all love Trevor. And those Lawrence. big games are when everyone else is hurt. <laughs> when everyone else is hurt. So I like you're gonna get that again. Yes, Marvin Jones will have a couple, you know, two touchdown games, but good luck knowing when to start him. Uh Marvin Jones stands. 
Yeah, I mean, he's not an alpha receiver. I, I don't even like that those terms, but like he's very clearly a number two. He he has never been a number one, even in college. You can go all the way back to Cal, where he was two years older than Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen came in as a freshman. That doesn't happen, and, and just immediately out, you know, was right on par with him. And then as a sophomore, when Marvin Jones was a senior, massively outproduced him. Was way better than him. And obviously, Keenan Allen's a star now too, but. Marvin Jones has always been second fiddle. I love seeing the tweets that are like, you guys are sleeping on Marvin Jones. He's Jacksonville's number one. No, he's not. He's never been a number one. You're wrong. Yeah. I, uh, if, Pat, if, Marvin, if, oh. if Marvin Jones buries us this year, then then so be it. Uh, I mean, what what would that be? Is it a 12th year breakout? Uh, Sean, do you have any metrics on that over on Rotoviz? Well, we're not still tracking the breakouts for the uh... – <laughs> retirement home guys <laughs> <laughs> there's not a database for him <laughs> oh my goodness so herbert dak and russell wilson go here aj Dillon goes to jet as his first running back The last thing I want to say about Marvin Jones, I want to say one more thing. People love contested catch and highlight real wide receivers and don't understand that it's consistency well, by play, drawing targets play over play. We we also are the guys who play a highlight reel when we draft this. Okay, so, yeah. you know, <laughs> let's, let's not like throw stones. Like we are in a very glass house here. This is a good point. This is a good point. <laughs> but you got to be able to consistently draw targets. That's the big thing. I mean, he makes some awesome plays. Marvin Jones is a good contested catch receiver. He's a good player of the football. I just that's sort of the why I wanted to make that point. Like that counter is valid. He's good at catching, at tracking the ball, at catching the ball. He's fun to watch. I, so first, I, you you talk about his contested catch, but first, you're not talking about his contested catch ability. Before this, you called him a number two wide receiver, which is also pretty bullish <laughs> a way to describe yeah. Marvin Jones. <laughs> Seems like you're in. He's never, but yeah, he's never been a number one. Maybe he's a number three now. He's a number four. Tyron Johnson, number three. <laughs> I, I do want to circle back. Team ten with Amari Cooper on the roster in no Chargers took Herbert over Dak after making a bet on Amari. That's weird, right? Yeah. It's weird that Dak was in the eighth. I don't know what happened there. Why? Why? Yeah. No, like, there's no explanation for that, I don't think. I, I like Herbert a lot. I guess Eckler. I, it, okay, Eckler. Yeah. That's weird. I mean, maybe he's going to take Mike Williams, or thinks he's going to take Mike Williams. Maybe he really wants a Charger stack. I don't know. That's interesting. I guess people are spooked on the, uh, on the DAC injuries. But then why are you taking Amari? To your point. Right, right. Yeah, once you've you, – you need Dak. <laughs> yeah. That Amari pick you've already made that bet. You've already made the bet that you're not catching passes from – who is it, Garrett Gilbert? Yeah, we're not we're not making those. <laughs> God damn it, Eric clipped me. I didn't realize – he. sorry, Eric posted a meme of me on Twitter from earlier in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I did meme. this. <laughs> Is that when you see that <laughs> one leaf is yeah, preventing yeah. all of the drainage in your... Uh... That's when the water was hitting me, which is... <laughs> I mean, this does very much capture... Uh, I love it. Everyone's salivating like. over Team 1. Where is your god now? Yeah, that's not going to do They it. all salivated over Team 3, too. This is what happens, you guys. Keep your eyes up here, all right? You guys get fooled. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's not as pretty now, is it? It's got AJ Dillon. It's got the best quads in the game. What's Jet gonna do? I missed that Brian Edwards. Yeah, he took him week four. He's just literally trolling. It's got it. Jet's doing Jet's doing pretty well in life. That he's just signed into a main event team, trolling another team. I uh, well. Yeah, his team's gonna be good though, because he's trolling people. It's gonna be very good. <laughs> um, I'm getting some text from somebody who's watching the stream, and 
they're they're valued at team two taking uh Brian Edwards in the eighth round, which yeah, I also am now <laughs> dying at. That's very funny. <laughs> it is pretty funny. Look, when you don't take a running uh, receiver in the first five rounds, the thing you need to do to lock up that wide receiver production is reach by seven rounds for your wide receiver too. That's the that's the key. Hmm. 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 This is a very wide receiver heavy room. They don't like quarterbacks. There's a couple good builds. I don't like it. People will draft Brian Edwards over Will Ferrell. Will Fuller <laughs> instead of going to therapy. That's not the only guy that he drafted him over. There's like a whole slew of them. Sean, are you in on Brian Edwards at all? What was your what was your kind of opinion on him coming into the league? Yeah, no, I what well, I He's got a little bit of that situation where you can look at the metrics and say, okay, well, just from a market share perspective, he's going to be better than other types of things because of what that offense does. Now, uh, there's so many red flags in terms of being there for a long time and you know, not having the good rookie season is definitely an issue. More an issue, I think, for someone like that than even, say, Jalen Rager, who We're up uh, here. I think we can count on. Let's hit a pop. Let's hit a Let's hit a quick pause on that because we, we're up, and I think we have to talk through this a little bit, right? I just, yeah, but, but, but we need to be careful uh, trying to see who we get on the wrap, depending on what we do here. Sean, I think it. Oh, god, I think it's pretty clear. Uh, my comment because you guys were talking about a different guy a minute ago in the in the chat. Look in the chat. Uh, I'm with the wide receiver, Sean. I, I know you you're down to uh to complete our stack here. Are you good at yeah, that? Yeah, I yeah, I am. Okay. All right, let's just do it. I cool. mean, we that, we made our bet on uh Yeah. We yeah. gotta get it. Elijah I, I, Wentz. We took Waddle three rounds earlier. He is our third earlier. rookie, but we're just you know. This is I mean, Sean talks about drafting fun teams. This is we, a fun team. We talked about prostate problems. Now we're just like <laughs> we're, we're we are learning cool. to pee. We're very we're small. small. <laughs> we're, we're we're peeing young. <laughs> the fourth time it stopped, it was a little painful. This now looks like maybe uh, we passed some sort of stone, and uh, now we're now we're free free flowing. Let's do so. it. Um, yeah. Let's see. I, who who were you? Who else were you guys uh, considering here? Because I I think he might be back too. If I'm I'm looking at the queue right. I realize I'm the only dad in this room i believe unless you guys have kids that i don't know about so no one no one got that teaching your kid to pee joke but <laughs> you have to so, teach him to pee i feel like don't they like come preloaded with that software <laughs> yes that's all right that's fair too <laughs> i don't mean i don't know you I tell mean, me it is. They, 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 they piss in the in the diapers right out of the, right out of the shoe man <laughs> that's, a, that's a relief i was like you, you gotta teach him that no <laughs> preloaded <laughs> All right, I love this team. I honestly love it. <laughs> it is fun. Yeah, I mean, it's a very fun team. I I like Sean's option, but I have another Sean player that I think makes a lot of sense for this team. You check the chat, Sean. Hmm. That's a uh, that's not a, I would call a Sean player. I'd call that more of a, a Mike Leone player. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, Sean, no matter how much Sean's on him, it will always be Chat a knows, Leone player. Chat knows exactly. I mean, I, I think I think that's interesting. I'm really curious what's going through Sean's head right, right now. He's been dead silent for like a round. What Sean, about, uh, here, I'll throw someone else in. Yeah, I've been just, just trying to figure out what maximizes our chances to get as many of these guys as possible. And can't wait to find out who these guys are. <laughs> I mean, there is a, a pick here who is a pretty good ADP value that fits what we yeah. need to do pretty badly. All right, so Marvin Jones and Kenyon Draco. I, I think... Mike Gusecki is a, a cartwheel smash uh, for this build, for our needs, our bet on the Dolphins, 
ADP value. He checks every box that we need right now. Okay, let's do it. Pat, I know you hate Gasecki. You gonna try to push us off him? No, I I did not like Gasecki last year because he had never really been good. Um, but he was better last year. He wasn't as bad. So I'm open to the idea, you know. That players can improve like Logan Thomas? Well, I'd like to see him show me that he's not terrible first, and then maybe I'll get in on 2022. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, I think – and I think the tight ends is, like, maybe the most difficult position in football. So if a guy's showing improvement um, – And, I mean, it really – tight end is about to get super gross. We know the FFPC yeah. drafters continue to crank it. In our last draft, when we did do the cranking purple, we took Fant, and Gesicki is kind of our Fant in this build and we'll still tack on one more, maybe two more late, but I, it's nice to, to get a crack on Gasecki at this price. I think I'm going to pee. And he was, he was better uh, last year than Robert Tunyon in yards per route run tight end 11, right behind Tyler Higby, uh, right behind Dallas Goddard, right behind Noah Fant. You'd obviously expect Fant to show a lot more improvement given the profile, but he was competent last year. Uh, so I, he could potentially take another leap forward if the offense does. Sean, do you think there should be three rounds difference on Noah Fant and Gesicki? Probably, but Gesicki is somebody that I have a lot of, and it's it's great to get in here as opposed to earlier. I mean, he has an early round nine ADP. And so if you can get a tight end with this much upside at a full round discount, still in the range where that kind of matters, then I think you want to do it. He's basically like a Kyle Pitts, right? I mean, he's just a big receiver. And so it's a matter of mm -hmm. like how many routes does he run? You know, is he out there on the field? I think that the upgraded wide receivers make it harder for defenses to take him away. I think if they look to those receivers a little bit, I mean, he could have a big breakout season. I'm not saying that he's Kyle Pitts, but you have someone who is a crazy athlete, right? And if we see someone with that much athleticism start to take a step forward like he did last year, I mean, this could be the time when he takes that jump of like the, the Zach Ertz, you know, mid-career jump where all of a sudden, you know, now you're a star. And in this range, it would be very hard to, to get a better value some, someplace else. Yeah, I I think that I think he made a ton of sense uh, yeah. for this team, even if he's not our absolute favorite tight end in the world. But at some point, like you can get squeezed hard. And I mean, we, yeah, we don't yeah. want to roll as much as Pat loves Zach Ertz. We don't want a Zach Ertz, Adam Troutman, Anthony Ferkser team. Oh, honestly, Zach Ertz is going to start going probably like <laughs> Zach Ertz might not get back to us. You know, like the, the Zach Ertz uh, hype, I think is starting to get a little, a little much. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think Zach Ertz is solid. I don't think he's a guy you should probably be reaching for in round Man, 10, but Russell people Gage will do it. Is someone's wide receiver three. What? God, can we help? But we need more around? of these. No, we can't. No, because they're, they're, we did, and they're in the room, and they're taking their guys. Yeah, that's a good we point. Need we need to stop helping, helping them. them. <laughs> oh, I feel so bad for that human being. Just enjoy your life a little more. Why, why are you taking Russell Gage? I can't tell. I can't. I, I honestly can't tell if Evan is trolling me with this comment. He says Crane is just too sharp drafting twenty percent Hertz, which is literally no. the exposure that I had. So no, thank people you. Are, but also, people are legitimately patting you on the back yes. for your okay, for your Hertz. Right. It's so gross. It's so gross that I do feel like it must be backhanded. But <laughs> I, I'm still willing to bet against Zach Hertz if I'm if there's a market where I'm able to do that. But well, that market. Good. The market's going to materialize very quickly for you to bet against him. I think his ADP is going to come up here. Guys, this draft has not gone the way we planned, but uh, I'm having a lot of fun doing it with you guys because I think I, we're, we're navigating it well. This is a good a good room to do something that's a little off script. No, every, everyone wanted us to draft eight uh, wide receivers in a row, but I legitimately think this is a very good team. Yeah, that would have been boring. Uh, we've we've done seen that, that before. We've done that team. We're at six receivers through nine. We took a tight end. You're going to see how we continue to play this. There's going to be more pissing. No Sean, I know I know you don't draft guys looking at opportunity typically, but is there like a limit to that? Uh, in, in this case, that limit being Tyrell Williams, where you're like, who else are they going to throw to? If it's like literally what other wide receiver could they throw to? Uh, do you have any interest in him? I've started mixing him in 
much cheaper than this uh, in best ball, but but I'm kind of I'm kind of open to it. Are you? It, it kind of it depends very much on price. Uh, the volume plays at at huge huge discounts get pretty interesting. But before that, I would see uh, so many of these veteran wide receivers have the same problem at receiver that running backs have in the dead zone, where their moat is just so narrow. I mean, they can't hold off any kind of competition. They have a bad game. You have to go in a different direction. And so uh, there are roster cloggers who also I don't think necessarily have – I mean, they're roster cloggers. They, they won't help you yeah. win, and they could keep you off of other players who might emerge. Do you look at those guys in best ball at all, or do they just – you think your, your capital's spent uh, better elsewhere? It is better in best ball because since you're not going to be able to move off of anybody anyway, uh, it, it makes more sense to make some of those kinds of plays. It's – we talk about some of the changes we've made here. Column and I have been doing these listener league best balls and they've been crazy because it's basically, I mean, an entire league that needed to get the adult diapers, right? I mean, it's just all yellow. And so <laughs> and we've got a team with like Melvin Gordon and Mike Davis and Josh Jacobs. And I don't know. Oh, Leonard Fournette. We've got Leonard Fournette, but it's like oh, round wow. 16. Right. So, <laughs> We've been there, Sean. We know what those ribs are like. I'm just yeah. glad I wasn't the only one to say diaper on this trip. <laughs> but Pat? man, Jarvis Landry was the other guy. I, I think Isiki was clearly the pick. I'm totally with you guys. That's part of why I said that I'm glad that I'm drafting with you guys because I, I probably would have missed that. I think that was a very smart call, and I'm glad that, that I'm drafting with you guys. I, I would have liked Landry with the three rookies. I think he would have made a lot of sense as our wide receiver seven in this build. Didn't make it back. Yeah. That was the guy I was talking about that Sean liked, if anyone in the chat cares. Yeah. No, I, I thought that was – I think that was definitely in play. Yeah. Um, but this Gesicki was, was too good. To Landry would have been a great it. pick if we had uh, – you know, if we had taken Waller or whatever, you know. I, I think value-wise, Landry was a great pick. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's one of those kind of cases where, I mean, Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, those guys are excellent reality players, very solid fantasy players. They're almost certainly not going to torpedo your team. If you're trying to win the whole thing, you kind of have to balance out, okay, do I want some safety in those high leverage rounds? Do I want, you know, guys who could be the overall wide receiver one upside? It's hard for me to take someone like a Robert Woods when Jarvis Landry is so close. And, I mean, the difference in price is astronomical. And the Browns could throw more this year. I mean, he's still earning targets at a massive rate. His targets per out run still very strong. If the Browns throw more this year, like he's going to be, I know we do this with Jarvis Landry every year, but he's going to be a lot better than than his ADP. Like he's not going to be a league winner, but he's going to be a lot better. He's not He's not a Russell Gage play. He's better than a Russell Gage play for sure. Yeah. So some of the, the couple rounds previously, uh, <clears throat> we're kind of gross on the board and and now i feel like there's lots of picks uh i like right now terrace marshall yeah, would have been fun to get keep our all rookie team going yeah would have been i mean i'm never gonna take pat mahomes there but jets jets build my team he knows what he's doing jets build themselves a team and it's stacked with kelsey all right jet all right um let's let's do that vincent reminds me let's do a few plugs here like the stream guys if you guys are watching like the stream subscribe we're going to do some more plugs in a second here um all right connor does go that's who okay. i was eyeing i thought he would have been very nice with our cardinals team what are you guys thinking um I'm looking well at the that. guy the guy i wanted to maybe a little early for um but i don't know Put is it, it what I wrote chat. in chat? It's the yeah, it's what you wrote in chat, Ben. Um, so what I if mean, we went? I think you if, can get him at twelve. If we want him, we should get him at twelve. Yeah. What? It, so what do we do here? Another name I wrote in chat. What do you guys think about that here? Or well, when Sean calls Devin Singletary Barry Sanders, I start to uh, pay attention. So I, I mean, I'm on board with that. <laughs> Sean, yeah, I'm do you like Singletary, Singletary here, or like a, a pass catching back? How do you like to approach this build now at running back? Well, I think with the two early guys, we want to make sure that we get some of those really safe late guys. And by really safe, I mean I don't. We like have nine safe seconds. Players. Oh, take take. Uh, yeah, who? Take, who? 
Singletary? Singletary? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> take him. Take it's him. like, we're doing a pick. It's him. <laughs> it's him. <laughs> now, the, the question I was going to ask, sorry, I got caught off by the guy taking loss there. There there was another, so the guy we're taking at 12, there's another option at that position. I prefer the, the player who's in the chat. What about the, the other option? Is he someone with some of the buzz with the situation he's in now who would also be a potential play? Is it who I just wrote in chat? Yeah. Yeah. I think thinking through those two tight ends. Um, yeah, we should probably, let's see. So team 10 Goddard team 11 Higby. Um, let's do another a couple other plugs here. <clears> while we wait for this. <laughs> okay. Cole I, I love this chat. It's very true. I just did a, a, a live uh, stream recording with, okay. Cole commit went. Yeah. Uh, with Sean last night to do a draft. It says, Sean is amazing, but his clock awareness is a zero on Madden. <laughs> That's how I was feeling <laughs> last night. I was like, Sean, pick. Just, just pick. Just get to the point. <laughs> like, I got to click something. This is my take on it. I feel like there's a part of Sean that would like just a very rogue accidental pick because he wants to draft the rest of the team with one hand tied behind. I mean, his he neck. does. It's so, it's a great <laughs> well, that's why we took, uh, took Barkley and Swift. I think Sean, <laughs> Sean just wanted to feel alive. <laughs> uh, I, I love how taking Barkley and Swift multiple picks after ADP is us feeling alive. <laughs> it is. I, my heart was racing. And then we took yeah. Tyler Murray we went away from wide receiver. I was like, Oh my God, <sighs> the room's like just ignoring quarterbacks. It was crazy. Oh my goodness! I I think now, uh, man, Komet I thought would come back around. So the dynamic right is that all the tight ends have gone down and are uninteresting. So I think, and I've seen this in in underdog is that it doesn't matter what Komet's ADP is. Like people are just going down. They're like, I need a tight end, and they'll they'll scroll down until they find the next guy, well, and he's the next guy. So he's going like that- twenty picks ahead of ADP. Because Irvin Ingram just wiped out yeah, that, exactly. that section. Like, that was who people were taking in this spot, and now they're just gone. Exactly. What's the latest on Ingram? I, I'm not up to date on that. Ingram, calf, uh, calf and it's mysterious, <clears throat> and he may go to IR. Okay. i got to move him down my ranks. Jeez. Sorry, guys. Adjust the ranks, Ben. Adjust, Adjust the ranks. Good Lord. Ramondre Stevenson going here. I'm going to do that this second. Yeah, they said they're going to evaluate over the next few days whether or not to put him on, on IR. Not what you want to hear. No. That is not what you want to hear. So we're going with the other discussion point that we've had. <laughs> the kicker here, I think, definitely makes a lot of sense. Yeah, the kicker, I... I <clears throat> Look, I think we go with a kicker here. We've Justin been filling, Tucker is good. We've been filling out our starting lineup. It's a Sean always says it's a race to fit, to fill out your starting lineup, and I think kicker does really check that box for us here. Unless Sean, there's a defense you like. Damn it! God damn it! <sighs> well, I, I know who we should take here, but you guys might no, not like it. Pat, just fucking no. Run. We're not I, taking Zach Ertz. No. Hell no. Okay, <laughs> I guess you guys don't want to win the big money. I, <laughs> <laughs> what can they do? Right. Look, Chad, I, I've been trying to tell them. I've been trying to tell them for months. They won't take Zach Ertz. I don't know what to do. I, I, I hate this Italian I, Zach Lovey. I got Ertz the pivot. Lovey character. I got the pivot. <laughs> what are we taking? Uh, so I, I was thinking, I feel like there is a little bit of a wide receiver tier gap after like Rager and Gabe Davis. Do we have in, any interest okay. there? I, I mean, I, I could, but we have a lot of youth upside already. Well, that's a reason to take more youth upside, I think, because we need to hit big. We're gonna and we're gonna miss okay. on a bunch of these guys. So let's let's swing for the fences. There goes Ingram. Someone I, didn't hear. It. Someone's not paying attention to the news. <laughs> Sean, can I, I get a take on Rager and uh, Gabe Davis? I, I prefer Rager. I think that you've got multiple problems with Davis, where he was the better guy, and that's what should matter. He was also a vastly underrated prospect coming in. Right. But the Bills continue to signal they don't want to give him a big load. There may be a thing where he misses a bunch of weeks. And so uh, Rager here is the more fun pick. And before we take Sean, did you see my chat? I know it's a guy that you like as well. Is that? 
No, that's great. the other thing I was thinking about is that we okay. could go that direction, but I think there are going to be options to get that in the okay. next round. Yep. Me yep. too. Yep. Yeah. All right. Right. Here it is. And I think I like that suggestion a lot. Uh, Gretchen, I feel like if we hadn't taken the swift pick that that would have been an absolute smash. Yeah. Yeah. Context. No, let's go regular. I, I, I'm fine with that. I just wanted to make sure you didn't click right when Sean finished his soliloquy and uh, that we were, we were good on that. I, I think I could have gone the other way with it. I mean, I'm sure he's going to go and the chat already has been talking about him. I um, do. I do like this idea of, I mean, we, we have these rookies, uh, taking continuing like pat said to take these bets on guys we're, we're gonna miss on a chunk of them but we're making bets on guys who could be you know top 24 wide receivers if if things break right yeah <laughs> jet jet goes geo for me if he makes it post it here so i don't get trolled for trolling <laughs> so apparently uh, it was you, very obvious you, who I, we were talking geo about a ton of sets for your build jet yeah yeah oh there he goes right behind us that's that was that was my pivot but <laughs> there you oh. go uh i'm going to get another beer i think uh i think regular was the better pick there i actually really like that i i think we needed another i pat you made a great point there to just continue firing bullets at youth upside i like that a lot yeah i think that's like you don't want to get away from it if you're gonna be i mean the other thing is right we we as sean said we drafted wide receivers poorly through the first four rounds because we only got two of them so i'm feeling a little bit behind the eight ball like no matter how much yellow we put on the board since we know that the probabilities of all those guys of being as good as we need them to be is, is lower. So, you know, taking, oh, taking oh. some big cracks yeah. is the way I like to go. What I, what I will say on the, on this note um, from experience last year, I'm going to, I'm going to give a big mea culpa here. Uh, I was looking back at the team I've mentioned before that did very well last year in the, in the final uh, FFPC. I mean, it was a Camaro Diggs team, so it did well. Finished nineteenth overall. Um, we weren't particularly wide receiver heavy early, but we felt like we needed to get some wide receiver points. Wound up taking Golden Tate and Larry Fitzgerald late. I was not particularly on it. Co-managers, etc. You get to a point where you feel like, okay, we just got to get guys that have roles, this and that, and, and people like them. There's there's similar guys to them this year. Those guys are completely off the map now, but there's similar guys to them this year that go in these rounds later. We took them in like the sixteenth and seventeenth. And I went back and looked at it, and in part I was like, yeah, you know, we cut them right away. They didn't matter to us. But what was very interesting was I looked at the rest of the receivers that went in that draft. T. Higgins went after we took both of them. Mm -hmm. Chase Claypool went in the 20th round after we took both of them. You keep taking the youth upside bets. If you want to hit, you especially at this point, Jarvis Landry was a different story. There's That's still a player that has a real profile. When you get late, you keep taking those upside bets I wasn't very high on Higgins uh, pre week one last year. I, I thought he was, you know, Me behind neither. AJ Green. He was a 2021 player. He wasn't going to get on their, in on their three wide receiver sets. Because um, I thought John Ross was going to play. It was still, you know, I've, I've always been a big John Ross guy. Uh, you, you keep taking those rookie bets. That's, that's an example from last year of how it can pay off. He went, uh, Higgins went in the 18th, Claypool went in the 20th. Those are the bets you take. Yeah, and you know, Sean talks about the the multiverse. Um, you know, and there's a multiverse where Ronald Jones didn't get hurt last year and and won me a bunch of money. So I have asked Sean to look into technology to to find that one. But uh there's also a multiverse of this year where Cam Akers is healthy and Travis Etienne is healthy, and a bunch of wide receivers have gone down instead. Like there's nothing about those injuries in training camp that was particularly running back related. I mean, J JK Dobbins takes a big hit in a way that I think you know, running backs are a little bit more at risk for, but it's, it's really just total blind luck, uh, you know, bad luck that these guys went down and it, that bad luck could have hit other players. So, and, and frankly will hit other players too. So taking those upside swings also helps because that's going to happen. We're going to miss, you know, I had like Cortland Sutton was my highest owned guy last year in best ball and it goes down week one and that's that you know so it's you you want to have the the ability to overcome that type of stuff and on the team that we our best team last year with crack rock we took Odo Buckham jr and you know there's the acl and, and we're able to overcome that so i do think you want to set yourself up to be able to overcome that type of stuff and we did that because we got chase claypool off of off of waivers it was a big big help um in getting that team to the next level yeah and the difference this year is because the cat's out of the bag 
about these rookies, you know, really destroying, uh, you know, their ADP or not even ADP. Uh, most of those guys who are candidates to be this year's T Higgins or Chase Claypool are getting drafted. Well, Jet, right, right as we were saying that, wrote in all caps, Pat, I'm going to snipe Diami if you if y'all don't reach. Fair fucking warning. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, to that point, last year, Diami Brown probably doesn't get drafted in these, right? No, he doesn't get drafted, yeah. Yeah. That's that's the new thing of people realizing, oh my God, these guys, yeah, they might not produce for you right out of the gate, but they could be the guys you need weeks 10 through 17. And it is good. I yeah. mean, last year was a big year for rookie receiver production you know we always overlearn the year the the lesson from the year before that's a great sean siegel quote from an article that i wrote that everyone loved as the best quote from the article um (laughs) i love that i love that story but we always uh overlearn the lessons from the year before so maybe that doesn't stick forever but um yeah that is definitely true that that's happening this year Yeah. Hopefully we have to teach people that rule or that, that outcome again next year. Well, of course, you know, I know Sean, you're generally loading up on the second year guys, but like how much more of a point of emphasis is it for you this year? Or is it um, a point of emphasis? Cause I think for me it is uh, because of the class that we're dealing with, like this is, you know, potentially the 2014 class all over again, maybe even better if we get lucky. So like it, how much more is that putting you on the second year breakout? players yeah it, it's exactly the class makes a big difference and because there are so many options through the draft now we talk about how you know we can tend to push back a little bit on this idea that wide receiver is deep it's deep in a range where you only get one out of 12 picks and so you can't rescue a team that starts <laughs> with barkley and swift just because the next couple of rounds are deep you only get to take one guy you've got to do it by committing to it the whole rest of your draft. But one of the things that's nice about this year is you've got the guys in the two, three, four, five range who are going to be the next Stefan Diggs and Tyree Kill. But then you also have the guys like a Rager, like a Henry Ruggs, that you can add late that give you more upside than it seems like. Because even though they probably aren't going to hit, I mean, the chances are there and it's there in, a, in an extreme way. And so I like to be able to just you know keep doing it. It's not like you have to, I mean, I talk about reaching for, for Higgins and Judy and Chanel, and I do do that. At the same time, you don't feel like you have to reach for that one guy. You don't have to take CD Lamb, you know, at the 204 because he's the only guy to really fit that second year model for you. You got a lot of options. And that's one of the best things about 2021. I mean, the other best thing about 2021 with all these second year running backs, and that's been destroyed by injuries, which has been really unfortunate. But we still do have some really cool things with the second year players. Yep. Yeah. And I, I guess we're, we're about to be up here, so I'll save the next question. But I do want to ask you about the uh, this rookie class in general, too, because I, I feel like it's been a little bit disrespected. I, I think this rookie wide receiver class is actually pretty good, just not as good as last year's. I would agree. And it's got a lot of, of fun depth. It was unfortunate that your favorite guy is uh, both on the Ravens and hurt. Uh, that would add more depth yeah. to it as well and make it even more fun. Although I can't get the discount on him that, you know, when a guy is literally placed on IR today, um, you know, he could be back in week four, but um, still you would think that maybe you wouldn't have to uh, see him go in round 11. Uh, people are in on Bateman. It's, I get it. I mean, I I do get it, but it's also tough because uh, the dynasty community is not really in on it. So the redraft community, I don't know where the hype's coming from. I, I know. I mean, I'm saying it, but I don't think it's. I don't think that's why it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gronk goes. He was a guy we were starting to maybe take a peek at in uh, in this build here. Getting the uh, we talked about it a lot on some of our previous main event streams. The take a peek. Let's be serious here. Pat's gonna pound the table here. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be so upset with you guys if we don't take Zach Ertz here. There's literally (laughs) no other tight ends. Well, there's no other tight ends. Look at his look at his point in the chat. It's a way up. It's way up. Here, I just I just added it. Bottom. I think I think we can get that guy coming back that, if we want that's, to do some tight ends here. Okay. Yeah, we need, we need to take two more. Pat, I mean, about, you're taking this guy in the fourth round last year. Like, you know, uh, this is kind of crazy. Sean, what are you going to say? 
Well, I have a lot of Ertz. I'm not off of him. I also wanted to ask about uh, Pat's guy that he really pumped on stealing bananas. Um, I pumped a lot of guys on stealing bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Who is he? I, just let him take fucking Zach Ertz. He wants Zach Ertz. Give him Zach Ertz. Yeah, Zach Ertz, baby. Finally on one of these tight end premium teams. He catches. He falls down. He catches again. He falls back down. He gets over three yards downfield and he falls down every time. One and a half. One and a half every time he catches and falls down. That's how we do it. That's how we win. Eric, Eric, will you please clip that so I can post it week three when we cut Zach Ertz? From yeah, we're game. definitely <laughs> cutting him by week six. I mean, it's a lot. Uh, I love this is the chat. Back to back, we have uh, Ertz is a smash and yuck. Uh, right. I love well, that. That's and correct. Both are right. We, yeah. need a, we need an Ertz clip at this point. Yeah. There we, we go. We need a clip of Ertz just falling down every time Pat drafts yeah. Ertz. We can just play the clip of Ertz catching it and falling down. Please, oh. please <laughs> tag me because those count for one and a half. Those those are worth one point seven points in this scoring format. <laughs> yes, he, yes, it was a two yard fall down. I will say one point seven. I don't like Zach Ertz. If there was ever a time to capitulate to Zach Ertz, oh, it's when Gronk and Henry go off the board and you only have uh, Mike Gusecki as your first tight end in a tight end premium league. Literally every tight end's off the board. Sean, can you put in chat who uh, Pat was else was pounding the he's table? At, he's at the top of the queue. He's at the top. and I, that That's who I want and I think we'll be there. I don't think we'll have any issue getting him. In the 14th, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Man, Justin Fields... Now, God, what the fuck are you people doing? We already took a quarterback. Why do we have to take all of the good quarterbacks? He, he had to stack him with David Montgomery. I mean, why, why is no I, somebody t- pay a, a reasonable price for him? I'm upset. There's another, a couple quarterbacks that should have gone. I mean, this is ridiculous. And Lance goes in the 12th. I'm angry, guys. I'm angry at this quarterback pricing. This is what this is what happened. I mean, this is what you there's two dynamics at work, right? Where you find yourself we found ourselves in this spot a lot last year where the best pick in round six and seven was the elite quarterback. It's why we ended up with so much Dak, so much uh Deshaun Watson. And then you find yourself occasionally in that spot here this year. It's not quite as pronounced as it was last year, but there's still, we were in a huge tier grab. Kyler Murray was the best value, but there's also a huge opportunity cost because quarterback is one of the deepest positions. And you know, you can reliably get a Justin Fields in the 13th, the Trevor Lawrence in the 14th. Uh, it definitely makes it a Dak in the eighth. I mean, if I had known Dak was going to be there in the eighth, although the thing is, you know, the wide receiver tier point is such an important one because even the 2v2 of like Kyler Shark versus Dak Sutton. I think I take Kyler Shark. Like I, you know, it's it's or it's very very close. So it it was just kind of a rough spot to be in. So Sean, how do you think about the quarterback position when you already have grabbed an elite one? I think in general we just fall back to this is this is all we're we're rolling with because we made such a big bet on him. Yeah, I, I go either way on it in terms of I have a lot of one QB teams. If there's a second quarterback who I, I really like, I will definitely take them because there is still some value. Number one, the quarterbacks are getting hurt. And then number two, you can still match them up in these shootouts, which is a lot of fun to have that kind of upside. And so I wouldn't stay away from it. It's again a thing where that second QB is the same thing as the first QB. It's if you end up with a flat spot, a tear break, you don't have somebody else that you like. That's not really been the situation for us. It's also an issue where we didn't have an elite tight end, which means you have to address that more. It makes it harder to have the second mm-hmm. QB. The wide receivers we're talking about basically don't have an ADP, but it definitely sounds like we have to consider taking them anyway. Right. Yeah. So I think I think we can make a case for the wide receiver we've been teasing. who probably won't make it back. Uh, Sean mentioned a, that second quarterback in the chat and then also that third tight end. We were also discussing the quarterback and the tight end are not going to come back uh, based on ADP if we want to play it that way. Well, who's the tight end if he's not coming back? Because I didn't Blake see Blake Jarwin isn't coming back. Yeah. And we get I'd be okay with that. Game. We have 15 seconds. Um, Let I, I'd prefer Brown, but I'd be fine with Jarwin too. Sean, make a Ben or Sean, you got eight seconds. Make a pick. Jarwin or Brown? Ben. I, Brown. Brown. Okay. Uh, did I get it in time? Boom. 
That's that's where I was going to go. But I was actually going to go with I, I was leaning towards Sean's name that he put in the chat. Just the the one name I thought would have been interesting here. Yeah, I think um Yeah, I like Pete's point about the tight end. The thing about um well, I'll, I'll just type this. <laughs> but I guess now we have some time. Um, Sean, like, what are your thoughts on this quarter, this uh, rookie wide receiver class in general? Which I guess they can't be that bad since we took Waddle and Diami Brown and Rondell Moore uh, on a main event team, but and Jamar Chase. So you must like the class, okay? But um, it seemed like people were pretty down on it at first. Just kind of curious for your macro thoughts on the class. I like it. I think that it is deeper than people are giving credit for. I think the fact that Elijah Moore and Ronda Moore are first round prospects and in some ways better than, you know, other guys who have gone recently in the first round makes it pretty exciting. Those guys are going to have an instant impact. And then Devonte Smith, because of his size, because of his placement with Philadelphia, because he's had some injuries in training camp, I think gets forgotten about a little bit, which is sort of funny to say about someone who, you know, looked like the greatest wide receiver of all time in the semifinals and the finals, you know, going down the stretch. Now we know that he did that as an older player against younger players. We know he did it on a team that scores at will and with a quarterback who was able to beat out Cam Newton. So definitely some things you know, working in his favor, but I think that we have to look at these guys and, and Jamar Chase now gets forgotten about a little bit because he was sort of swallowed up in the, the burrow concerns, you know, how healthy is he? And, then just that there are other two other good wide receivers there. But yeah, it's a fun group and it does go pretty deep. I mean, someone that I just took in a, a rookie draft today, uh, who it's probably just hope, right? But Tylen Wallace was a fantastic mm -hmm. college player. And even though he's in a horrible situation now, I'm, I'm interested to see him play, right? We talked about some of these guys like a Waddle who's going to get a little bit of a run. You know, does Wallace actually make some noise before Bateman is able to get out there? I mean, if Sammy Watkins is looking good in Baltimore camp, I mean, the idea that Tylen Wallace could come out and score a couple of touchdowns in week one, if he even runs like 10 routes, <laughs> then, you know, I think that's kind of an interesting guy there. And he's there very late. Brown's obviously there very late. He's someone who should have been, I mean, both of those guys should have been drafted earlier in the reality draft, which would give them a lot more cachet and fantasy as well. Yeah, that's true. Um, and not to make it a dynasty thing, but the thing with Wallace is like, I don't even know if it's that bad of a situation Obviously, the, the situation is bad because he was drafted so late. You don't want him to go day three. But given that, he actually has somehow, some way landed in a situation where he could end up playing a lot week one. And if he ends up being good, I think a lot people just forget a lot of those red flags that they had. Like, you know, Terry McLaurin, people were so excited for in Dynasty entering last year when, like, Dwayne had. Um, but Haskins is going to be his quarterback. So, you know, and it, and it was a ter ter absolutely terrible situation. Um, so I, I think he'll be fine as long as he's good. Um, real quick, uh, if for some reason uh, you guys are watching this stream and one, have not subscribed to Ben's Stealing Signal Substack, you, you are legitimately playing fantasy football wrong. He's churning out content. He's on top of everything that's happening. He's spinning everything from a fantasy perspective, signal and noise, all that good stuff. The link is down below. Get signed up to the Substack. And also, on a similar note, I, I can't imagine you're watching and you're not a Rotoviz subscriber. I think it's legitimately the most egregiously priced piece of fantasy football content in the industry. Full stop. Sean doesn't pay me. I'm not a paid Rotoviz influencer. It is the best piece of content out there. I would literally pay $500 a year for all of Sean's content and probably more if we're being honest. So get over there. It's egregiously priced, Sean. You have Sean's, to fix that. Sean's doing some calculations in his head. <laughs> I, I, sh I should probably pay pal Sean just uh, for all of the money he's won me over the years. So I'm just making sure if you're watching this stream and you're not familiar with Gretchen and Sean's work. The links are down below and get yourself straightened out because you're doing it wrong if you're not following these guys. Well said. Yeah. Uh, about Sean. <laughs> and I, I, I forget Peacock Pat over here too who teased yeah. this legendary article for months and months and then he finally dropped it. And you know what? It's hard to tease an article that long and still deliver, but you did it, Pat. I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, I had to, I had to build up the hype. <laughs>
<laughs> and then pray to God I, people enjoyed it. Um, I like, you know, when you're diving into a profile and, and doing a lot of stats based stuff, you gotta, you gotta put a lot of jokes about Jason Garrett in there. So that's, that's the way I roll. So Burrow goes, uh, I, I, I think there's just an overreaction. I just wanted to comment on the overreaction to his injury. Like he's the other one when fields went like 14, 12, like, the yeah. lesson from this is, like, I, if I could redo one thing, it would be that I, I don't think we should have taken Kyler because we could have went field Burrow at 13-14 and had two really strong upside quarterback bats. I mean, that's crazy. Like, you, you obviously don't know how your draft's going to play out until after, but that would be my one hindsight, knowing how it played out. I'd rather have uh, have taken a, a receiver yeah. there and, and then and then stacked up this receiver or this quarterback. And, and Lance fell, too, like – I think I'm going to be shooting for late round QB a little bit more going forward. But we tried it the other day and we got locked out, completely locked out. Okay. We ended up with um, with like Matt Ryan and Tua. Oh, geez. So, okay. yeah, we got completely locked out and we got locked out by like the end of round 12. Okay. Um, so it's just, you just don't know until it happens. And this room, the signal was Mahomes in the early fourth or, you know, late fourth and, and Allen at 411. Kyler falls to us, but there's not really anyone you expect to go before Kyler. And then Lamar goes right after. So I remember when we took Kyler, I was like, all right, that was a great pick. So we didn't have any information that would yeah. have, you know, given us a clue about this. I mean, I, I immediately you saying that you tried this the other day and got locked out changes everything I just said. But I haven't done uh, a, a live main for a week plus now at least so <laughs> you you act like that's such a a long time to go without actually no we, we did one last Thursday night with crack rock so that's even a lie even that was a lie it's only been six days well i mean you guys have done one every day it's been the 12 days of christmas this uh, last 12 days hey that's the 12 days of best ball uh it's more been like five oh days right you have that as well you, you actually already have that Brandon. my bad <laughs> um it has been a lot of drafts and it's also why I get it. People want, they love the ideological drafts. They want to see us draft 12 straight wide receivers and pick up the pieces, but we are drafting a ton of teams. We do. Uh, you, you hear Sean say it. I think we all feel similarly. We want exposure to different guys. When we have these takes, we're, we're talking in ranges of probabilities. We're saying we like this guy, you know, 60% versus this guy, 40%. Well, you don't want to draft the 60% guy 100% of the time. Sometimes you want the 40% guy in your portfolio. So that's how you end up with teams that look like this. And uh, some people call it a hedge book. Uh, but I think when you're making smart player specific decisions within structures that make sense, it's, it's hard to go wrong over a portfolio of teams. But we also, I don't think like had two guys on the board and we're like, let's take the guy we feel worse about. We just kind of let the room push values to us. Yeah. And, and basically took detours from structure. Like, you know, the, the way we mix it up is that we went with DeAndre Swift instead of reaching for a T Higgins. So it wasn't like, um, you know, we made like a suboptimal player choice in our mind. Um, so I think we just kind of let the the room push us off our structure a little bit more in the early rounds, and then we got back to it. Yeah, I get it. Sometimes you guys want us to come and play all the hits because you guys like the uh, you know you like the pop songs, but sometimes we're gonna play our most uh, obscure album front to back, and you're just gonna have to deal with it. Yeah. Uh, all right. David Johnson goes. We got the defense is starting to go off the board. Jarwin would have been a fun fall here. Uh, what are we thinking, mm -hmm. guys? Well, it's 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 Hamler watch time. So, yeah, I just wrote that in the chat. I'm with. I'm you. good with that. Yeah, it's that Hamler works for me. Time. We need we need big swings here. We need some wide I receiver mean, points. Shad told me Hamler's the best guy in Denver. Uh, Literally so. better than than Jerry <laughs> Judy, who he wanted to take three rounds above ADP. So I think Hamler should have been a second round pick based on that logic. <laughs> are you guys? Are we taking Hamler? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. We're talking about him. We are. I hope we are. We're not getting him. We're not getting him back. <laughs> okay. I think Pete's typing something, but I assume he's going to It's very unimportant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I'm, I'm taking him. It's our ninth receiver. It's our ninth. I mean, we, we got we got to nine receivers. We did. 
I mean, Sean, when we get to nine wide receivers and you see all that yellow on the board, I mean, what comes to mind? Oh, I... <laughs> gonna have to prepare myself. Yeah, no, no, go ahead. It, Pete, it looks like we're finally piss boys here, right? <laughs> you doubted me. The people tried to doubt me that I couldn't get Sean Siegel to say piss boys. Please don't ever bet against me ever again. I please don't. Come on, guys. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you, Sean. Um, R.I.P. Sam. <laughs> oh, oh man. Wow. Thank you, Sean, for making an all-time ship chasing moment. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I oh think god. Uh, Sean, I will get your approval on this, but we may need to include that in a future highlight reel once we drafted our eight wide receiver. <laughs> I think that's why he was debating it so long. Like, this is definitely getting circulated. You can see the thoughts going in his head. That's gonna be played again. <laughs> oh my god! I I do love that we have three wow. running backs, and we're like not even considered running back. None of us has suggested a running back for a while. Like. This is how we build after the after we went two running backs in the first four rounds. I mean, I think that's a a worthwhile point. Well, we have uh, the author of the zero running back list with us here on the stream. I feel like it is my, it might be time to go back to running back. Sean, are there guys who jump to mind for you? Well, there's a player who was was you know maybe the best college running back from this class fell to the bottom and then has been fantastic supposedly in Detroit's camp and would give us a little bit of a hedge on our early injured running back. Also, Pat, the guy who has destroyed our Antonio Gibson dreams is here and would be... <laughs> he has not destroyed <laughs> anything yet. Can you can you please stop burying my Antonio Gibson shares <laughs> before the season's even started? <laughs> Guy's a third string running back. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, I mean, I'm sure you're going to be right, but <laughs> just wait until it happens, please. <laughs> Let's hear it. Let's hear it, Sean. Make this case. Uh, he's not getting taken. I, I promise you that. Well, you're on the clock. Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. Do we want to take him here? Or we should talk about who we want to take if we're not taking. I him think here. we can. I mean, either one of what? these guys getting back is fine. We don't need both of them. What about what about the tight end? I just slid to the top of the queue. Baby face killer. I'm into it. I like it, man. Do, I mean, literally the only tight end on the roster right now. They they brought back Ryan Griffin, but they cut oh, they Ryan did. Griffin okay. before that. But I mean, that's not a great sign when you get cut. I mean, I, I'm also in. I Sean, don't think Sean are, is. Are you in on Babyface Killer? I, I I have no opinion on this one, and. Last season, I had no opinion on Logan Thomas. Yes. Then got me You've been asking me all offseason for my take on who this year's Logan Thomas is. I have not had a take. I don't think it's going to be that good. But this is this is the, the actual one that fits in my mind. Uh, I will say this. I Anyone who's read Ceiling Signals knows that I spend a lot of time hedging and uncertain and, and talking about probabilities. The, I, this is actually meant to be a compliment to Sean, but it's going to sound like a humble break. But it's it's hilarious to me that Sean has picked up that I have this one weird little trait where I I, I <laughs> for, however I think about football seems to translate to these random ass tight ends. I've been able to hit them pretty well over several years, and you've been asking me all off season for this random tight end. You've been saying that you're like you're really good at these tight ends. You probably remember all the way back to my first year at Rotoviz. I wrote the tight end opportunity report. We had Eifert and Jordan Reed. They came out of nowhere. It was uh, 2015. I mean, I have not had an answer for you. You asked me on Stealing Bananas last week, and I was like, there's not a Logan Thomas this year. I don't think Tyler Croft's going to be that good. But, like, the way they use him in the preseason, the fact that they cleared out the room, it feels like the Logan Thomas thing we were just talking about where he ran every single route at the position. The, the coaching staff comes over from San Francisco. They used him in some of the way uh, in the preseason. They did one of those little rollout dump offs. One of his two TDs was a total George Kittle play. It was the little yak play. And he, he 
he's not good or anything. He's not athletic. Like he's probably not, he's not going to be like uh, amazing. But this is the dude that winds up getting ninety, a hundred targets. Oh baby, Sean. When you know we make it to week fourteen, championship game. Zach Ertz, Mike Gesicki on rest. Zach Ertz is eating tapioca pudding with his humidifier. Uh, Tyler Croft is the one that's going to carry us to the promised land. <laughs> that's good. That's good. We now have some championship week points built into the roster, and uh, that'll just uh, open the runway for the 500,000 over the next three weeks. We'll probably just leave those guys on the bench after they get there. That's right. That's Sean, right. How, how do you, how would you like to celebrate when we win this 500,000, you know, that's a uh, $125,000 each, but I feel like we could throw a pretty nice party, the four of us. Yeah, well, we're going to have to go to some of these Chiefs Super Bowl victories over the next five years. I mean, is it three? Is it four in the next five for Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs? Okay, I like how many do you ha, I've never been to Arrowhead. It's a stadium I would love to go in tailgate. Have you done the uh, the Arrowhead tailgate experience? I haven't done a lot of tailgating there. I've been a lot. And through the Schottenheimer era, you know, into Dick Vermeil scoring at will, giving up those two touchdown fourth quarter leads to Denver, and then a little bit here with the with the Andy Reid era. It's a lot of fun. Arrowhead is is really cool. I've been some days where, you know, you had to try and figure out how you're gonna feel your feet again. People are out there in their snowsuits and <laughs> newspaper is bundled around. That's you know, normal for NFL in November, December, but no, Arrowhead is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, that one. Yeah. Lambo Arrowhead. Those are, those are a couple on, on the top of my list. I would love to go to, I think I'm going to make it to the Ralph this year. I've gotten an invite to come up and go to a bills game and, uh, you know, maybe jump through a, a folding table, uh, in the middle of a parking lot. So I feel like I need to need to do that. Is that our buddy, Mike Leone in, with the invite? You know what? Uh, it's not. I did that. I, I am in a league with a bunch of guys who live in Buffalo and they invited me up, but they're a little too crazy for me. So my thought is maybe I stay in the confines of Leone's, you know, yeah. nice, relaxed environment. And then I do kind of the tailgate experience with the crazy guys. That's right. what I'm thinking. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we should do a ship chasing uh, retreat out to Buffalo. <laughs> it's a lot closer for you two than, than for me. <laughs> Bad. I I went to Seattle uh, a few years ago. Gretch remembers because uh, we were texting trying to uh, to meet up, and uh, that was it was the USC UW weekend, right, Gretch? Yeah, it was. It yeah, was. we had. This, I, I love this story because this story's it, good. Yeah, I mean, at first, like I was like, I'll I'll come down to Seattle. I want to come see you. It'll be great. Uh, and then you were like, I don't know. I'm with like my, my wife and friends. We all traveled together. I don't know if I can get away. And I was like, all right, fine. Like I'm kind of busy, but then you were like, no, but I can make it work. And I was like, no, I, I forgot that I, I actually already have met you in person before. So I'm just Gretch, not going to go out of my way. Cause you're like, didn't really Gretch, care that much. Gretch says to me, he's like, yeah, let's meet up. Let's meet up. And then he goes, oh, I forgot. We've already hung out in person. <laughs> We already did that. We checked that box like six months ago. It was like six months after we met. I was all he only wanted to pop his Pete Cherry, and otherwise he didn't care. Uh, well, I mean, and also you seemed busy. I want to be clear. I still want to came down. Like I get it, man. I get it. And then you tried to offer me a peace offering of tickets to the game. Yeah, because I was going to a wedding the next day, and so me and all my friends who had season tickets weren't going to be able to go to the UW game, and and we were trying to to hook you up with some tickets. Did I ever uh, do that? Did I ever send? I think they all had already sold their tickets, yeah, and they, I was like the only one who had one left. Yeah, they bailed. They bailed. Um, all right, so we have uh, two more non-kicker defensive picks left, guys. Man, the I just want to say the chat is hating on my Tyler Croft take, and good luck, guys. Good luck. Why? Why are they hating on Tyler? I mean, yeah, who, it doesn't make sense to me. The I think one of the lessons of tight end two is that. The system really matters. Yes. There's some of these systems that don't utilize the tight end whatsoever. I mean, good luck chasing the Carolina tight end. That's not going to work. The Bengals don't use the tight end. Like some of these guys, they just don't use them. And then some other systems use a tight end a lot. And these Shanahan systems tend to be one of the ones that are good to basically the Shanahan, the Kubiak, that whole tree tends to utilize the tight end. They tend to do this boot stuff. You see this in Tennessee. You see this in Minnesota. You see this in San Francisco. Like, 
it's you know it doesn't mean that these guys are necessarily going to be smashes, but it's a it's fertile ground, and he's like the only guy. Defend Tyler Cross with an Italian accent, you know. <laughs> I don't have a good Italian accent. That's a These good guys. Uh, what, what are we doing? What are we doing? He's the only oh, guy. We're here in New York. He's just... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we already take. Oh, hey, we're, 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 we're on the clock. We're on the clock. We're on the clock. Four seconds. I was like, oh wait, we got forty seconds to make a pick. Is there anyone uh, that we like? I think Sean's our bees is our. our, our or where he wants to go. Right, I think John? both those guys will be there in the early 18th if we want them. So I just will mention the guy who might not make it back. I, I mean, Quez Watkins yeah. is pretty fun. I, I agree, but we do have nine of receivers and only three running backs. Do we want to get to yeah, five we, running backs? Yeah, we could take both of these guys. Yeah, uh, we could. Back. I I'm think we should get to five that. RBs almost. Yeah, I think Quez Watkins is more of a like a take a peek guy where these two running backs, we probably need to sit on them. Yeah. Um, let's let's do a running back john what are you thinking yeah well i can't be stuck at three seconds and have to make the pick oh we'll take we'll take patterson we did we did it we did it the haters will say that's what you were thinking you were thinking antonio gibson's getting benched in week three by jared patterson (laughs) i mean if i'm gonna you know if sean's gonna talk about jared patterson just destroying my season then (laughs) i might as well get Jarrett Patterson on the season on the team I call him Sean. Like that's that's sort of a very that's like the important emotional edge for me. Get, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a very necessary pick in that regard, a hundred percent. Like if Sean's gonna be right about this, he better be on the team I call him Sean, or it's gonna be a rough old twenty twenty one. Oh, that's an interesting point, Sean. Check the chat. Check the chat. Sean, check my chat. I have more perverted shit I need you to say. <laughs> I don't think we can make that other pick now. I mean, I don't know. I'm curious. I, I personally wouldn't, but I'm curious if Sean would. Sean's a zero RB guy. There's, I mean, I, I defer to Sean on a lot of stuff, but there's nothing I'm going to defer more on than running backs in the 18th round. I'll promise you that. <laughs> Kadri Allison went. I mean, running back is it's depleted. It's wiped. It is wiped. It's pretty wiped out. It is depleted. I will say, without the elite tight end, it was nice that we didn't have to chase any of these running backs Wait. in the rounds where we normally drafting them. Do you have a guy? I think we can talk openly. Like Team Twelve is going to do what Team Twelve is going to do. Um, yeah, but sniping us. Your Honor, permission to speak freely? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. What, go ahead, talk talk it out. I mean, I, I think Quez would be a would be a fun Did, pick here. Yeah, I, I mean, Quez makes a lot of sense. Sean's got an interesting tight end. Did Latavius Murray never go? Am I missing him? No, he 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 got drafted in the seventeenth. Yeah, he got drafted seventeenth. Oh, he just went. Okay, he didn't get cut. I mean, he he. I don't. Like Latavius Murray, but in the freaking eighteenth round when you only have four running backs, right. like did I, uh, yeah, I would have been into it. Did I see Anthony McFarland got placed on IR? Yeah, mm-hmm. he's on IR. Yeah, and, they, and that, no one knows what the injury is, they, which I feel like should be illegal. Like they have, they should have to say once they put the guy on IR why he's there. So that means Balage is the handcuff there now. Or store Benny Snell back to Benny, Benny Snell. Snell. You can't take Max Williams. Someone said take Max Williams to stack with Kyler. That's a that's a, a perfect example of the teams Pat was talking about. You don't take tight ends in certain offenses. And right, you, that's one of the ones we don't want. We, they're four wides. They're not running. They're, they're not. Teams. They're they're playing receivers. Yeah. Um, we're I up like, next, Sean. Who do you like here? We 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 we'll well, use the extra sixty seconds. Do we want to um, do we want to kick her on a high scoring team? Uh, these guys that we're kind of looking at, uh, I think will come back, or two of the yeah. three will come back. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Good point. Give us a kicker take, Sean. We need it. Ah, I don't. I, I, the kickers are not my favorite, but the Bills are going to score a yeah. lot of points. That's who I'm looking at. I'm with you. Tyler Bass season. Let's head to the Ralph, shotgun some beers, jump on folding tables, and watch Tyler Bass kick six field goals on stalled out drives. It sounds incredible. He's got to be the. He's got to be the K three, right? Who, what, Pat, I thought you. 
You were going to Denny these days. What, who, who's our who's our number three kicker once Bucker and Tucker are off the board? It's got to be Tyler Bass, right? Uh, I think he's he's really into Prater. I don't know if he has Prater or head of Bass though. Well, we, we just have, have, to, have to Tyler Bass. We have kicker chasing. It's the show where we chase the best kickers, the kickers that help you win championships, the biggest legs the breaking news it's everything you've come to love and know the time is now for kicker chase let's get some fucking kickers oh yeah <laughs> so goddamn good <laughs> we got i was helping you it wasn't traditional we didn't take a blanket ship but just taking a kicker one round early should get there. It felt music. justified. I felt like we yeah. earned it. We needed a clip. We needed a clip. We, we needed a clip. Sean, you were feeling a clip, right? You, you, you've been waiting for a clip to come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, got this I feel like Sean's just like listening to an album. But, uh, Sean, yeah, I, 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 <laughs> he's, he, this is Sean, Sean drafts very locked in. If anyone is wondering how Sean drafts. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's, we've never confirmed what's in the headphone for Sean. We might be coming through speakers, and he's got music in that headphone. I mean, he's listening to coach's tape on Jarrett Patterson right now. Yeah. To, <laughs> now he's moved on to the next pick. Sean is saying to himself right now, "There's a reason I only come on this show once a year normally." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very clear. <laughs> uh, yes, we we are Bills. Bills fans on this team now. We have, we are Eagles uh, fans and we are Bills fans. I mean, that's a that's a good point, but all uh, the the Parader point was also a good one. And yet we we have the Kyler Rondell stack. I mean, we want touchdowns there, big time too. So, I think I think the quarterback and kicker correlate the worst, right? Isn't that from DFS, Pete? Isn't that sort of true? I mean, that was years ago when yeah, kickers mattered. Mercifully, they got they got rid of those. I mean, it conceptually makes sense that yeah. the, uh, the drives are stalling out. <laughs> you need you need three TDs from your QB. You don't have to get a TD from your receiver necessarily. Or one is, Denny, is plenty. Denny's kicker, Colin. <laughs> Hopefully Tyler Bass is at least kicker four. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping Denny. <laughs> Sean, how many more main event drafts are you doing? You guys mentioned, uh, are you, is your draft are you, that uh, Stealing Bananas draft, is that live? Uh, no, we're going to, we're going to record it. Um, I got, I'm a big fan of this Jake Koff guy. Sorry, Sean, to cut you off, but he just said, if, if this team wins, I'm circumcising myself on IG live. Yeah. So we're going to put that out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do we have to win, though? Jake, uh, yeah. what, what do we have to win, Jake? Because you've been hating, you've been hating all get yeah. all drafts. So what do we have to win? Our league, the whole thing. Jake Koff has had a very rough show in the comment section. I've I've been watching him just kind of uh, peck away through it. But we will take you up on this offer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Keep 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 chat through it. Uh, here we go. They call me an influencer. There you go, Sean. I talked to you about the Rotovis sub. That's what we do here. And uh, all Excellent. jokes aside, get the Rotovis sub. Sean, when are we going to get the update on the zero RB list now that we got all these roster cuts? Yeah, hopefully at the end of the week, I put together a little bit of a strategy piece for it today to kind of go over you know, how you would actually execute. I know that a lot of longtime readers probably have a feel for that, but I do get asked you know, from people who, you know, have it won, which again, I mean, only one out of 12 teams is going to win any given format or any given league, but it, like, why didn't it work? Why didn't I have the upside? Talk about, you probably didn't draft enough wide receivers, which we've tried to remedy in this team, even though it's not obviously a, a zero running back team. But then the other thing is you want to have that mix of profiles. You want to have the variety. You want to go for enough upside. I think that zero RB drafters who don't win and don't enjoy it didn't go after enough. Right. So it's the thing that Pat was mentioning where you got to keep going young. You got to go after the upside all the way across. If you go upside halfway and then boring picks the other half, those boring picks are going to weight you down. They're not going to be a safety blanket for you. So that pick, hopefully the update will come out in terms of looking at our last picks here. Is it helpful at all to think in terms of 
like if any of the three or four guys we're looking at had a big week one, what the difference would be in terms of how much we felt like we had to bid to get them on the roster? Yes, I think yeah. that's a major consideration. For sure. And I think the thing that we're normally trying to talk through in these picks is like, who is the guy we're going to get a big information advantage, like you said, week one or two, and then no, like if he's a holder, just move on. Or who are the guys that are just pure stashes where you're just going to have to sit on them? Like when we draft some of these rookie wide receivers early, the Waddle, the Rondell Moore, the Jamar Chase, like we've invested enough capital in them that we need to ride it out for at least five to six weeks with these guys, if not more based on what we did. Can I, Let me propose something because we do get the waiver wire run here with this team, right? Even prior to the Thursday game. So we could take a running back in the list, get more news on what week one looks like, and then potentially swap that out for a different position in the first waiver wire run. Yeah. I think... Is there a newsy running back that we like? Oh. Well, the newsy running back would be a bad newsy running back. Oh. Yeah. Hang on. Because I, I think this guy will be here if we want him. I need to get... Because I know Sean has been big on Rashad Penny. I need your your honest take on the Rashad Penny versus Alex Collins situation right now. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm still adding Penny, but it becomes a price situation again where it is a difference between round 13 and round 17 or 18. I think you need to get round 17 or 18. Now that we know Alex Collins is definitely in there, I think Alex Collins is pretty good. And so it's not something where... Penny is getting beaten out by someone who's terrible. At the same time, he's not getting beaten out by someone who's terrible, which is, is a little bit of a problem too. I mean, those guys could stay ahead of him. And so I would be looking now to get exposure to both players. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and then where are you at, Sean? So we're on the clock. The other guy that's been in our queue for a while is Jamar Jefferson. How do you think through a prospect that you're excited about, but we also have the guy on our team who we need to fail for him to succeed? And make a pitch for the other the other guy you have, the other rookie you have, if you want him. Because yeah, I kind of so, want him. I mean, with Jefferson, it's a situation, I think he's really good. I think if Swift misses the first half of the season, it would be great to have Jefferson, who's actually going to score the points. I don't think that's even necessarily betting against ourselves that strongly. I think with how weak we are at tight end, that it'd be interesting to see Frermuth. He's been an absolute breakout star with the Steelers. I mean, you talk about Pitts going where he's going it'd be nice to kind of see another tight end in week one, uh, especially since we still are are questioning, you know, if we're going to have any points in week 14. What I was proposing is I don't think Frymouth will get drafted. So we could take Jefferson and then play for Frymouth on waivers, but I'm open to take Frymouth here too. We have three seconds. I think Frymouth is a pick. Okay. I put him, I put Frymouth in the, in the pick. Pat Phil Helmuth is the pick. I, we it, it is really our weakest position. I mean, the Tyler Croft thing could completely crash and burn. Let's be clear. Zach Ertz could be gone by, by week five. Uh, and then you're talking about, you know, how long is the Gesicki leash? Sean, I mean, you brought up the Pitts thing, but talk a little bit more. Like, you, Freemuth, you've said to me, if, if Pitts wasn't in this class, Freemuth would be looked at so much more positively. And, and I would just kind of mention Travis May. Pete, I appreciate so much the, the road of his shout outs. Uh, we've got some guys doing some great work with CFB, with Debbie, and Travis has been on for a move telling people you've got to draft him. I draft him in every dynasty rookie draft because the second year, those tight ends jump up so much in value. You're talking about picks that are otherwise wasted on players who are not real NFL players. Fermuth has been a star. I was worried that after that preseason game where he showed what he was going to do, and they were even kind of joking about it, not from a fantasy football perspective, but from a reality football perspective, they're like, I thought you guys said you weren't going to show the league how good he is. So they wouldn't be ready for him in week one. So, I mean, he's doing what people have thought he was going to do before he was completely overshadowed by Pitts. Now, unlike Pitts, I mean, he's a rookie tight end. He's got some other responsibilities. He's going to have to be a blocking tight end. And so, you know, maybe he doesn't have that rookie year contribution, but it'd just be interesting to see. I, I would be completely on board with Jefferson, too. I mean, if we find out that, that Swift is jacked up in a way that is going to affect week one, I mean, Jefferson's going to suddenly be, I don't know, maybe not, maybe not. I mean, people are so high on Jamal Williams that maybe Jefferson doesn't even generate that much well, he interest would, after he all. He would be worth about 215 220 fab dollars pretty easily, 
right there. Right there alone, people would be bidding it. You know, Swift's missing week one. He might miss more than that. You know, the winning bid might be like 260 even. So we got to um, get our defense here. Yeah, Gretch's favorite uh, Panthers gets sniped here. Uh, any defensive takes, guys? I'm distraught. <laughs> I don't have any defensive takes except for the Panthers. Don, did you put Seahawks in? What's our what's our? I did. They have the Colts. I mean, the Colts. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Has anybody yeah. had a worse? <laughs> yeah. Training camp than Indianapolis. You had me. They they're also yeah Titans Vikings not a not a bad start to the season there. Sean, did you just? Add, oh no, I was. I thought you were still adding guys to the queue. I'm like, Sean, we can't take any more of these guys. We're out of picks. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, had, he had an high school senior just now. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you never know if there's a bug in the FFPC software. You get a 21st round pick. Alex points uh, out that Firemuth did go in a yeah. round 10 of one of our previous main event drafts. So we got some he real did. ADP value. Based the, on the chat is is hammering denver and they went in the 17th round yeah it's all right the chat they like to think like they're know-it-alls but then they don't actually pay attention to who <laughs> they don't pay attention at all. <laughs> they just scream look at the they board fourth <laughs> defense off the uh off the board yeah. i would like to congratulate the team who just selected robbie gould because denny's article is called as good as gould <laughs> nice so. denny just been sitting on that pun for about four months. <laughs> about four years. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh all right, Sean. Let's let's wind this back here. Give us your your take now on this team. Obviously, a lot of picks in the line of fire, not a lot of time, debates, people sniping us, people watching, different construction than we're used to. Where are we at here? I like it. It'll come down a lot to those chase and model picks because those are picks that matter. That's when we talk about you've got to have enough wide receiver firepower. You can't take guys in five and seven that you don't think are going to score. But I, I like the players that we have. Ben mentioned the Kyler Murray pick. It is tricky. And in the last uh, main event that I did, we did execute the Lance Burrow thing really late. And I, and I like that. But in round six, even wrapping back in round seven, the guy that I really wanted was Debo Samuel coming back in seven. His ADP suggests that he should get there. He obviously did not because Jet was executing really a pretty brilliant draft out of the four slot there. But I'm not sure who, you know, who we would have felt comfortable taking. I and mean, Cortland Sutton, Cortland Sutton could come out, right, and just do everything we thought he was going to do last season. I think, you know, as compared to Saquon Barkley, who is so important positionally and has that you know chance to have the 100 points in the playoffs, it does worry me a little bit if we're looking at Jerry Judy having this amazing camp. And by all accounts, you know it's been just out of this world. And then K.J. Hamler, somebody who, I mean, he had a couple of 10-target games last year. We know that he can get behind the defense. You know, these are legitimate. And then Noah Fant, Albert O, behind that. I mean, there is so much competition four targets. It, it's hard for me to get off of the guys that I think are just sort of no brainer picks to get into some of the other ones. So I don't know where we would have gone there. And Kyler Murray, again, we're talking about, we don't want to reach for starting lineup. And it's re one of the reasons why zero RB works is you can get those starting lineup points there. It's winning the flex that really determines whether or not you're going to be in that final four, almost for sure. You know, it gives you, if you win the flex, your floor is almost like finishing fifth. So you're like, okay, we just need to get one more spot. And now, you know, we're into the fantasy semifinals. But Murray gives us that, you know, potential to have someone who could gap the field, even with how loaded QB is. And so I do like that pick considering I just don't know where else we would have gone. I and mean, we could have taken like Trey Sermon, but then I think people would have been more disappointed. <laughs> Sean. I, I, oh, go Sean, ahead, Ben. I do think you're underestimating – how much value Tyler Croft's going to add at the flex. <laughs> they call him babyface killer for a reason because he just swoops into your flex and destroys your opponents. I, I'm with you. Someone asked earlier in the chat tonight, if you could roll back one pick, what would it be? I, I don't really know other than the Kyler one. That's the one where we saw such deep value late where, like you said, maybe we reach for Debo. Maybe we pull the I trigger mean, on another and, luxury and, running back. But and part, and part of the reason there was we were locked into Chenault. We, and, and Sean was talking about taking him a couple rounds early. We, we were locked in, and then he goes to the turn, and that was really rough. I, I know you said we can't 
be excited about another team, but Don't it is going to be pretty funny when Jets team is the first zero RB team to take down a, a an overall <laughs> title. <laughs> he even took Alex Collins in the last round. He's acknowledged in the chat that he's watching. Uh, obviously, we're not taking all the credit for your team, Jet. Just about half of it. Um, uh, <laughs> good team. Good team, buddy. <laughs> hey, Jet. Um, curious you call it zero RB, and yet I see nine running backs on your yeah, team. There's, so. there's a whole <laughs> lot of running backs there. <laughs> Uh, I I like the Kyler pick um, because I think it was the correct thing to do at the time, given the information that we had. And then even the information that we got immediately after, you know, reinforced it. And then even with Dak going through, you know, to the eighth round, I still, like I said, the 2v2 is still like pretty good for us with Kyler. It's not until we get much, much later in the draft that you go, oh, we could have had Burrow for free and we could have Lawrence for free. But there's just no way to know that. So um, it's it, it feels like in hindsight, if I know if I get to know the room ahead of time, then then sure. But it, I'm like really happy that we that we took Kyler. I think Sean's suggestion that we do it was exactly right. That was the right time to pivot. We did that. I believe it was the quad last year. We, we found that exact flat spot and we ended up taking Kyler there. Worked out great um, to have him. So uh i'm actually pretty happy with that pick i don't really there's not like a ton of spots where i feel like we should have done something differently tight ends obviously the the weak spot of the team but i feel like we we know that and we attacked it and we hopefully will get something out of the four guys we're obviously not going to carry four tight ends all year but that's one of the big things with the information is like by week two or week three we're going to know which two of these guys are total bums and you know which guy is like pretty good and which guy is a total bum, but a guy who catches a lot of balls. And since this tight end premium, it doesn't matter that he's a total bum and he's a total smash. And that guy's Eckerts. And, and that guy's Tyler Croft. <laughs> <laughs> and that guy's Mike Gusecki. Uh, Sean, That's true. You They're, all the guy. Yeah, They're all the same guy. Sean. Fairmouth all the way. <laughs> Thank you. I needed, I needed the symmetry there. Um, all right, guys, this was uh, a ton of fun. Sean, you never disappoint. You're welcome on the channel. You're a, not only an honorary piss boy, you are literally the founder of piss boying. So uh, we appreciate you coming on the show tonight. As I've said, uh, this is all your piss, Sean. <laughs> uh, any any final thing, Sean? Obviously, we've been uh, talking about all the great work going on at Rotoviz. You and Ben have the awesome uh, Stealing Bananas podcast. Uh, in anything else here, uh, while we got this, uh, we we got the captive audience that you want to plug. Well, Curtis, Dave, Blair, those guys are all doing fantastic work. Colin Kelly and I are having a lot of fun on Rotoviz overtime. We have some bold predictions from some of our favorite people, including. Peter Overset, make sure you check out the Bold Predictions episode of RVOT. Yeah, uh, excited to uh, send that hot take over to Colm the other day. Excited to see the uh, the final product of that one. Gretch, stealing signals, the substack, it's pumping right now. Anything else going on in your world? This? Ship this. chasing. Piss boys. Piss boys, we are going to be rebranding the show. Please watch it chasing. Uh, we we stream on Wednesdays. Um, a few other uh, housekeeping things. Uh, we're drafting with uh, Davis Maddock uh, tomorrow night, and then we are heading to Vegas next week. So we're going to do a few main event teams. We are going to have a meetup with Ship Chasers on Friday. I'm going to send an email to you guys about that shortly. If you're going to be in Vegas, definitely hit us up. Pat, any uh, final words for you? No, I'm just about to go down the basement, get some sandbags, and uh, prep up this door here so the water stuff is going to my apartment. But this is a hell of a team. Uh, really excited to manage this team with you guys throughout the season. I think we're going to smash it. Uh, all jokes aside, Pat, hope everything uh, goes okay with that. That does not sound fun and sounds scary, and uh, sorry you are, are dealing with that. Uh, we will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, please follow Ben. Please follow Sean and Pat and Ship Chasing and all that good stuff. We'll see you guys tomorrow night.